song. Put your lights on. Here now, all your lovers. Put your lights on. Put your lights on. Put your lights on Hey now All your children Leave your lights on You better leave your lights on Cause there's a monster There's a monster Whispering in my ear
Jack falls frozen into the ocean No fear, just cheer for him And pray for his devotion When Ben cut the bigger shaft We screw on his back Oh, in times like this It's a piece of piss To reach baby Jesus I see things that I don't see I have no more words to say Me slave in the fray The world is a swallow Decorate 
Divided along Mars Seven in a row Seven up boys Seven in a row Everybody, what's the story? How's everybody keeping out there? Welcome, welcome to Demars Live episode 20. Do pop in, say hello, guys, into the chat. Let me know how you're all keeping. Uh, feels like I haven't chatted to you in ages. So happy to be back for some local chats, international chats, and independent music, as always, guys. I'm absolutely chuffed. Chuffed, chuffed, chuffed uh, with the new uh, graphics behind me here today. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Uh, Fazazzling it up. Like, as I promise, every time I take a little break, whether it's a day or two or whatever, I'm going to throw in something new into the mix. So there's a little bit of something new for you. Uh, so who do we have in the house? We got Becca from the blog. What's the story, Becca? Good to see you. We got Lindsay, Vincent. Hiya, Becca. How are you? And we got John Hell with the L Love Heart. John, good to see you, brother. We got Keto watching on a phone this time. Keto, let me know how it goes uh, on the phone for you. Floating music notes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Floating music notes. What, what else would you be having floating behind you? Music notes. The best kind of sh sh floating stuff you want. Absolutely. Tony, what's the crack, man? Good to see you. John Boy with the L alien head. Man, there's no no alien chats today. I'm sorry to say, or consider this will not be delving into conspiratorial realms. Um, but maybe it will eventually. We might bring it back. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, maybe we'll do something for Halloween, right? Because Halloween falls on the Saturday, which is when I usually host a show. So gotta figure something out maybe we should go into some sort of a theme so if you guys have any suggestions uh let me know uh cool great great to see you all in the chat guys um great show obviously great show today most of you know what's going on we got the wonderful dave duggan finally finally he's on the show we're gonna have a lovely chit chat gonna try not to put him on the spot too much and, uh, yeah, it's all a conspiracy. Absolutely. It's all one big, massive conspiracy, guys. So what's the point even having a segment, to be honest? It's just the whole thing is a fucking conspiracy, right? Yeah, it's always aliens. Fuck those cunts. Uh, who else do we have today? So we have our international segment. <laughs> I'm very distracted today. I feel a little bit... Yeah. Like I... Perhaps I should have eaten dinner or something, you know, one of those feelings. But however... Gotta keep going. Uh, we have our international segment today. Thanks to Lindsay for sorting this one out. As always, uh, we've got Mema, who is a Portuguese singer, songwriter, and producer. And uh, she's released some really, really cool tracks, uh, which I will play for you today as well. And we're gonna have a chit chat with her. And um, yeah, she's got a lot of stories to tell. Dave Duggan, of course, from Future Fears, who is releasing his upcoming single, uh, Obvious. Uh, which will be including a music video and um, yeah, great track. We're going to play it again today. We're going to do a pre-save raid for him and yeah, just get to know him a little bit more outside of him just trolling my chat because I'm sure that's all most of you guys know him for at the moment and Future Fears. So we'll, we'll delve into a bit more about uh, who is Dave Duggan. Uh, we're also going to be doing some in, uh, independent tunes. Uh, we got three artists. We got Lauren Ann. We've got Kinsey and we've got Amy Montgomery uh, today. So, a bit of music. Bisha this and Bisha that. Nice, nice good old mix, guys, for you today. So, uh, should be 
should be um, should be a good show, absolutely. And of course, yeah. Uh, before I forget, sorry about this. Yeah, Jesus, head's still not there. Yeah, we got the wonderful Claire Nolan with uh, consider this. She's there in the chat having a bit of a laugh there, guys. So do say hi to her, and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of. Ch she called the show uh, the weather report. Yeah, so we're gonna ch we're gonna essentially check out what's going on um, in the music world uh weather wise am i saying that correctly uh, we should we should have prepared this we I, I should have prepared this um but yes we're gonna have that lovely segment as well uh called consider this so that's the show in a nutshell guys uh I'm, I'm willing to throw in any any little extra little bit in there as well for example the lightning round is still hanging around if anybody wants to hop in on one of those might slap dave in on the lightning round um, we've also got the No Shame Plug game if anybody wants to hop on and uh, promote themselves or promote a company that they know, a small business, anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. I don't think we've anything else really prepared, uh, but some good combos, uh, most importantly as well. So that's kind of it. The weather, the current climate around the Irish industry. Okay, well, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, we, let's let's go with that one. <laughs> I'm happy yo. Yeah, Jono, if you want to uh, to hop on here and uh, and promote the L the L Vaporoo, uh, I have no objection to be honest. Uh, did a bit of vaping myself, as you know, transitioning from the non from the smoker to the non-smoker. It did it did actually help me quite a bit, I have to say. Um, ended up getting rid of the smokes entirely because of covid shat myself literally because uh when i realized it was a lung virus i was like fuck that shit and uh that was the best motivator uh to quit smoking but um yeah my bro uses the vape as well as a matter of fact anyway all right guys so that's my little bit of stalling there at the beginning bit of chit chat once again, like, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Really much appreciated. Do like the stream. And uh, we're going to be here for the next two hours, I'd say. Um, uh, do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already as well. And do hit that bell button, guys, of course. Uh, I'm going to play our li first little bit of music. So let me turn off this background stuff. And uh, I'm going to play our first little bit of music. Uh, and this is by Lauren Ann. And Lauren Ann is an 18-year-old Nuri native. Uh, she's influenced by Nirvana, The Pixies, No Doubt, and Suede. Uh, she released her single, How It Works, which was recorded, uh, produced, and mixed, and mastered uh, in Dublin at Beard Fire Studios by veteran producer David Virgin and his sons, Rowan Keeley and Al Keefe. And uh, yeah, those guys were actually on my show not too long ago. I think you might know them as the Dublin City Rounders. Uh, awesome uh, awesome bunch of guys and uh, so their dad uh, actually produced this track and produced many other quite notable uh, tracks I have to say so uh, he has worked with many notable artists uh, which I only found out today during my research so very very interesting do check out Beard Fire Studios uh, really cool they've been around for quite a while and these guys are a great great uh, great thing for the independent music scene here uh, they're doing some great work uh, really supportive and uh, give some great advice as well for releasing tunes and stuff like that. So I really recommend those guys, Beard Fire Studios. Check them out. That's my shameless plug uh, for the day. Uh, but this is Lauren Ann. Let me slap this up for you guys. And that's our first little bit of music today. And uh, yeah, let's let's see if I got it. Yep, yeah, it's called How It Works. <laughs>
Our first bit of music today by Lauren Ann, and uh, that was How It Works. And um, once again, produced by Beardfire Studios, Keto in the Gaff. The government went all Karl Marx and are giving away all the monies. We're gonna live in misery for years. Uh, yeah, sounds absolutely terrible, man. Tell us a little bit more about that. Um, I missed the memo, unfortunately. Um, I'd love to know. Uh, a little bit more about that and uh, maybe you want to pop on keto and have a little bit of a chat at the end of the show <laughs> have a little segment for you so keto is due a segment guys he needs to have his own segment on this show uh tell me what you think um about having maybe like a you know something similar to what claire's doing uh keto i think would be quite good at that so uh yeah we'll give you a segment brother why not Keto, yeah, there's Claire calling you over. Yeah, come on, join us, brother. We'll give you uh we'll give you a voice, man. This is a uh, well I don't know what this is. It's a it's a public it's a uh, public access radio basically, isn't it? Essentially. I mean, we're not um We don't censor here. I mean, well, YouTube might, but uh I don't really censor anything on this thing. I don't think I I don't think I should. I just kind of pick what I like. Essentially, it's more so taste. And uh yeah. So, Keto, come on up here. Don't be shy. Um next bit of music, guys, by the awesome Kinsey K Y N S Y. Uh we played a bit of Kinsey's uh, tunes earlier on this year. She's been releasing some great tracks and getting some Pretty good notoriety from uh, Golden Pleck uh, Hot Press. Uh, in this year already, she's been highlighted at w as one of 2FM's rising artists. And she got uh, Hot Press um, Hot Press Hot for 2020. So I haven't actually seen that, but that's a that's a thing Hot Press do. Um, the last mixtape's 10 emerging artists for 2020. And Golden Pleck chose her um, as one of their... Pleck picks. So uh, this is her most recent release called Happiness Isn't a Fixed State. So this is by Kinsey. No man, no censoring. We don't be censoring here.
the awesome Kinsey uh, would love to get her onto the show eventually and have a chit chat with her uh, would uh, would love to know who who does her instrumentation and stuff as well the music is, is just fantastic I have to say uh, very catchy music Rebecca uh, loves everything about her Rebecca I know that let's let's try to get her onto well at least one of our shows because if, if she gets onto one show um, hopefully the odds are better that she'll come onto both uh, we got Dave Duggan in the house Dave welcome brother good to see you uh, yeah I'm buzzing I'm buzzing for the Dave interview I am buzzing for uh, Sophia's interview uh, Memas as well uh, which is going to be happening at half six and Dave is going to join us at quarter past seven just to let you know uh, so yeah, Mema is a Portuguese uh, singer, songwriter, and producer, and uh, we're gonna have a bit of a chit chat about some of her music that she released this year and just her musical journey, which is fantastic, guys. I'm, I'm telling you, the music she's releasing and has released is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And uh, and Dave, of course, from Future Fears, is releasing his tune, Obvious, which we're gonna have a listen to again. And uh, for those of you guys that haven't listened to it, stay tuned because uh it's a deadly track and uh we're gonna get a little bit into uh a little bit into sort of dave's life and uh <laughs> all his personal life his all these skeletons in his closet and uh what better time than now when coming up to halloween to uh to do all that so um yeah great um i think we have everybody in the house so do Give the video a like, guys, by the way. Help us boost up a little bit. And uh, Dave, don't worry, man. Don't worry. There's no backing out now, by the way. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. So, uh, yeah, Dave's singles released this Friday. Obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 16th of October. And um, we're going to do a little bit of a pre-save raid on it as well. So, guys, yeah, give the video a share as well. Uh, let's try and boost these numbers up. Uh, I think the max we've gotten up to is 21, uh, 21, 22 or something like that. Now, I'm not going to rest on my laurels and, you know, I'm just, I like to get a little bit pumped when the views and, 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 the, and the ratings and all that stuff uh, goes up a little bit. It just goes to show that uh, things are, are improving and, and the show's getting better and all that kind of jazz. So it's always great to see that. And of course, everybody gets more exposure than in that case. Um, the guests and everybody involved, everybody in the Demars team as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll play one more bit of music, I guess, and then we'll bring on our first guest. How does that sound? And uh, this track is by Amy Montgomery, uh, who, actually, God, I can't remember how I got introduced to her, actually. Uh, she's a 21-year-old uh, Irish singer-songwriter, and um, she was featured in UK Sunday People, Legends of the Future, alongside Dua Lipa, Rosalia, Gracie and Billie Eilish. What a, what a, a bunch of artists to be, um, to be mixed in with, I have to say. And uh, Amy is, a, is blazing a trail for powerful new female vocalists. So, um, yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, we've got Mema in the house. Mema, absolutely great to see you in the chat there. Um, really looking forward to our conversation. Uh, give her a warm welcome, guys. Uh, give her a nice, warm Irish welcome uh, in the chat there. Uh, our first guest, Sophia, uh, also known as Mema there, uh, is saying hello. Hello, Mema. 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 H
So great to see you there. Um, I'm going to play Amy Montgomery's track. And I'm going to pick uh, Intangible, which was released uh, this year. I um, hope you guys enjoy. So our last bit of music, guys, that was Amy Montgomery. Uh, definitely, definitely check out uh, her page. Check out her Spotify. Follow her. She's on the um, independent Irish music scene playlist uh, along with everybody else that I play today. Um, definitely check it out. That was her track, Intangible. Uh, she's got some other great tracks on there as well. Highly, highly recommend it, guys. Uh, yeah, all female artists today, and Dave. <laughs> so that's crazy. We're just absolutely surrounded by females on this show, and uh, what an absolute pleasure. What can I say? <laughs> so uh, brilliant tunes. Uh, yeah, really, really good music, and uh, glad you guys are enjoying it as well. Fantastic. So yeah, Dave has to be professional today. That's that's going to be interesting. I really, really am looking forward to. Uh, to that chat uh, it's going to be very good very good so that's why Dave's on last of course because we don't know how long 
Dave's going to go off on one. Although I, I have a tendency to go off on one too, so we'll both go off on two, if you will. Uh, so the show might be extended a bit longer. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, guys, so yeah, just a reminder. Um, well, first of all, thanks so much once again for, for tuning in. We have a great show, great, great show. We have our international segment with the wonderful uh, Mema uh, joining us in a couple of minutes. Um, then we're going to have the wonderful Claire Nolan with her Consider This segment, which is a um, is a discussion segment, but we've actually added something new this time, so Claire is going to go through everything today. Um, so we were, we were doing a bit of conspiracy theory at, at the beginning, but now we're going in a little bit different direction, and uh, we'll tune in for that one. And then, of course, Dave Duggan at the end. Um, yeah, was there something else I wanted to say? Yeah, of course. I wanted to give a big thanks, first of all, as always, to the Demartian rock stars uh, for you know for their subscriptions and for helping out with this, um, helping out with the with the show and all that stuff. So, uh, of course, uh, Kevin Laurier, uh, Lindsay Vincent, and Michael Arbader uh, are three subscribers. Guys, if you want to subscribe. Um, there's a subscribe star in the uh, description, so you can hop in there and subscribe for as little as a euro a month. It does help the stream, uh, you know, improve and, you know, uh, there's a couple of monthly costs involved with some of this technology that I'm using, so uh, it will be helpful, but uh, not necessary. Uh, a like and a share or a subs subscribe or whatever goes a huge, huge long way, or even coming onto the show goes a huge, huge way, or suggesting music uh, goes, goes a long, long way, so any of that kind of stuff guys is, is absolutely awesome if you wanted to even just throw a suggestion of an artist to come onto the show that is deadly so much appreciated much love to everybody and anybody that has contributed in any small way so far just want to thank you all first of all uh Mema, no reason to get nervous it's the most casual experience you're ever gonna have on a live show and uh i'm sure people can vouch for me to say that it's uh it's a it's a pretty easy going experience i have to say um so let's just let's just rip the band-aid off and get into it, huh? <laughs> All right, so please welcome the awesome Sophia to the show, guys. Let me do my round of applause. Okay, let's see if Sophia, can you hear me or let's see if we can set it up. Give me a second here. Still connecting, take your time. It's all good. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to connect. And there we go. Here we are. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I know when people are watching okay. the show before and then the, I, I usually end up hearing my own voice in, uh, in the background. How are you keeping, Sophia? Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for the invite. It's it's awesome to be here. Thanks so much. Uh, I've been keeping well, actually. I, I've been a bit sick last week. I, I got like this awful cold after my, my show in Prague, but recovering. Yeah, you can see my cool. voice is still a bit graspy, but <laughs> I, getting there. First time hearing your voice, it, uh, it's hard to it's hard to gauge uh, if you sound like this. Uh, yeah. Honestly, it sounds absolutely grand. Um, <laughs> I want to just thank uh, Lindsay for introducing uh, yourself yeah. to me and 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 bringing you onto the show. Uh, she always uh, recommends just the most amazing people and musicians. How do you guys know each other? Uh, we actually met through a friend, through Fanny. Um, she's a, a Hungarian artist that was living in Dublin at the time. I was living in Dublin at the time as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we met through her, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lindsay is also into music. She's studying music composition. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all connected. And Dublin's kind of the place for people to meet as well. Everyone is so mm -hmm. easygoing and open and communicative so yeah it was yeah. like that it's such a, a a well connected city musically as well and the size as well helps i guess plus the multiculturalism um yeah so it's, it's an amazing unique place uh, for music and art and for artists to connect uh but you you seem to have traveled quite a bit so uh places like berlin 
Um, have you been anywhere else in Europe? Have you stayed? And, and, and what has that been like traveling around with music? Um, so in my adult life, so to speak, <laughs> I have lived, well, well, most recently I've lived in Berlin and then in Dublin. In Dublin was probably the longest uh, outside of Portugal. Uh, I've lived in Austria as well, in the south of Austria, but it was just for six months. I did Erasmus there while I was in college. Um, but yeah, that's about it, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Berlin uh, was quite, uh, made quite an impact on me because um, I was part of a music producers collective there. And the city itself is so multicultural and there's so much going on, so much music. Um, art is everywhere in that city uh, in different forms. You have so many different tribes, so to speak, that it, it ends up inspiring you. And, and it's really an environment that sticks to you for, for a long time. Um, still today, I still miss Berlin and I was there for nine months. <laughs> so, and, um, so yeah, it's quite an impressive city. And then Dublin, I spent there two years and a half or three, I can't remember. Um, I only came back last year. Um, so obviously it also had a huge impact in my life. Yeah. Mm, amazing. So in Berlin, you were part of a collective called Strength in Numbers. So yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. So that, is it a collective of producers? How, how, how did that work and what, what did you kind of get up to? Yeah, it started out as a meetup group, actually. It was a, a Canadian chemical engineer that moved from Canada to Berlin to fully focus on music. He wow. started this group because he wanted to connect with other producers and to kind of have a little um, support system to help him grow and help each other grow in, in our own production skills so i found them through that website meetup.com because i was looking also for um music related meetups or concerts or something like that mm -hmm. so we started going every every saturday we had like a a set meetup uh, every saturday where we would show each other what we had done during the week we had these consistent one minute beat challenges where um you had to produce one beat w one beat um one a one minute beat with certain restrictions so you know when you put a wall on creativity you end up stimulating it more because you have to do the same thing but with all those limitations and that was quite an interesting exercise sometimes we we would impose that we need to make that beat in under two hours, for example, because mm -hmm. um, that really helps you. That really helps you structure the work in your mind, and it really helps you be disciplined and productive. Uh, and whatever is out there is out there. So the the purpose of that was to also help us finish tracks and help us deliver, which is a very common problem with producers and musicians who compose and, and write songs as well. It's to finish a track. For example, I have millions of ideas that I I just have like a, a little melody or maybe I even have part of the beat ready, but then mm -hmm. they are like that for months. <laughs> so that imagine. is all good. Mm. Yeah. So, so when you add it. some parameters, I suppose, to the situation. Uh, yeah. And of course, I suppose working collectively too, right? So there's an expectation for people to hand something in. Um, almost out of respect for other people, right? If there's a, everyone else is doing it, then, then you kind of feel that. So that's that's very interesting way to do it. And did you implement, did you get any ideas from this sort of, because this was back in 2016, right? So, and yeah. you've released a couple of tracks. So on Spotify right now, you have, what is it, three or four tracks, if I'm not mistaken? Um, I actually have six. I, I just released oh. my new EP last Friday, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I just dropped. It, it's my first. Um, it's my first EP from this project, so I'm really excited about it. And the reception so far has been good as well, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, but that that time of my life, it definitely had an influence, and in that mm -hmm. that producers collective for sure. Because before that, I wasn't that much into electronic music, at least mm -hmm. not. Um, I didn't really incorporate it into my my songwriting or my production. Um, so that's when I started experimenting a bit more with electronic sounds, with electronic, e even production techniques like sampling or um, other 
other stuff, processing, sounds. Sound design for me was very important during this time as well. So it definitely influenced these tracks. Uh, I think they're kind of a combination of all those places I've been to in the last five years. So to sum it up, the, these new tracks, they were kind of a, a way to reconnect with my origins, to reconnect with Portugal, to reconnect with those traditional sounds, because I always felt like traditional music here was, it wasn't, um, we weren't paying too much attention besides Fado. Fado is well known everywhere, but I wanted to explore some other, other sounds. Um, and it ended up being mixed with the electronic almost by uh, instinct. So it was something very organic, something very natural mm -hmm. that happened. So it was an interesting process writing this AP. Mm. And so you studied in a Aveiro, is it Aveiro? In, yeah, yeah, in, in that's Portugal. my hometown. And what, what was your, what, what's your background? It was in the Conservatory of Music. Was it, uh, did you do grades or what did you specialize in there? Um, so I specialized in classical guitar and vocal technique, but mm. classical, classical vocals. Um, but that was, a, that was about it. Yeah, it was the full, the full degree of, of course, he had music history and all those things and analysis and uh, yeah, but it was pretty much it. It's not, a, it wasn't a university degree. It was a, like a professional level um, degree, so to speak. I don't, I don't know the equivalent in Ireland, actually. Because um, we do it a bit different here. It, it was supposed to be, I think it was to, supposed to be equivalent to high school, but I did high school at the same time and college as well. So it's a bit confusing how our system works. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, from there, actually in college, I didn't study music. I ended up studying other stuff, more business related stuff, uh, which comes in handy as an Absolutely. independent artist. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, that's what artists sometimes well, majority of the time I've noticed have omit, you know, they don't realize that it's so important to um, mm -hmm. to work on the business sector, even, for example, the marketing even, you know, is, is yeah. so important. Um, I, I listened to a, a few of your tracks and um, yeah, sorry, you have the EP, of course, the six, six song EP, uh, yeah. which is the, uh, a collection of songs you've released since 2019, right? So I guess the first one was, is that correct? Yeah. I'm kind of working from memory, half memory here. And then, uh, I have some notes here, um, but absolutely beautiful. I have to say the variation within the song styles as well. So, for example, um, the first one that I did listen because I think it was the most recent, possibly um, Salt City, yes, Cidade de Sal. Is that correct? Salt City? Yeah, yeah, that's the, the name of the EP. Oh, that's the name of the EP. OK. And then, um, oh, yeah, Perdi o Norte, which is quite I found it to be quite, there is these tribal sort of elements, right? So t tell us a little bit about that. And, and I read somewhere that you were sort of going back into sort of a tribal, um, what is it? You were absorbing some kind of tribal sounds and things like that. Let us know a bit, bit about that. Yeah, kind of. Uh, so Perdil Nart was a track that I started writing while I was still in Dublin, actually. So it was, uh, I think, November 2018. That's when I started researching a bit more about traditional Portuguese music and absor absorbing some of those sounds. So the track started from a little um, traditional melody I found from the north of the country that is played by bagpipes actually so the the little uh, so that actually is originally played by bagpipes and i picked that up i i changed it slightly and um and i i i kind it kind of grew into that song with all those more percussive elements and uh, somehow some symphonic elements as well um, I wouldn't say it's tribal, but it definitely goes to the root of um, of, of my origin, so to speak. This is a very back to the basics or back, back to the um, yeah, back to the roots kind of of, of song. Mm -hmm. um, but the the meaning of it, so the track is called "Lost." Um, I lost my north. It's an expression we use here quite a lot. Um, like I lost my direction, okay. and, and that's how I felt at the time in in Ireland. Actually, <laughs> I had a very yeah. I was feeling really depressed, a little melancholic. So and so the song is all about that. It's all about how. You get into that deep dark hole and you, you don't necessarily know how to pull yourself out and mm. um, so the song starts it's very dramatic <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's beautiful by the way i have to say it's it, I, I was mesmerized i was absolutely mesmerized and 
especially oh. for uh, the fact that I don't speak Portuguese, for me to listen to that and absorb it, um, it was still quite beautiful. You know what I mean? I still felt kind of adept to it. I could feel the emotion more. Maybe it was like as if I had one sense missing. So then yeah. I, I could sense other things within the song stronger, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's amazing. I was actually really curious to see how how you would uh, react to, to a Portuguese uh, song. Because... Um, I don't know, for example, even in Portugal, we're so used to listening to, to songs in English, but I don't think it's that, it's that, um, that um, regular or normal to, to listen to songs from other countries in English speaking countries, which is interesting. And I, I mean, you guys have a huge industry, so why would you need to? <laughs> so it's I was really curious about it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like there is there's songs that I would listen like my wife is from Brazil so which is quite embarrassing to say because I should know my Portuguese should be quite good at this stage and <laughs> unfortunately I've been kind of stuck in Spanish uh, mentality right. so it was quite difficult to translate <laughs> I, I'm just making excuses here no I'm just a lazy <laughs> lazy person I did not put the effort into Portuguese um, but I do pick up a little bit of course you know naturally I have over the course of a few years um, but I would generally like uh, music from you know uh, in Spanish, let's say, or listen to Bossa Nova frequently yeah, enough, yeah. and and uh, for me, I I like it in a, in a sense where I don't want to think, I just want to feel it. You know what I mean? And yeah, and I think as well, maybe as a drummer, perhaps. Um, I don't know. It's hard to explain it. It doesn't bother me. Do you know what I mean? I don't. I don't find a necessity to hear songs in English at all. Yeah, to be to be honest, I feel the same. I, I listen to, to songs in many different languages, not only English or Portuguese. I really like listening to Arabic music, for example, mm. to in Arabic. Mm. Um, and I love it. I really love it. Um, yeah. And I don't understand most of what they no, say. So. But it's quite haunting almost, isn't it? The Arabic sort yeah. of uh, vocals. And I, there was a song by a band called Trans Global Underground. Very oh. niche kind of interesting project i actually played one of their songs just literally before you you came on it's called chariots um but they have a song called i think it's called sky giant and okay. it's got this very beautiful um female vocal that that are these kind of elongated sort mm -hmm. of uh sort of high notes you know as, as you can kind of imagine like that very slow sort of arabic yeah. kind of tones and um it's absolutely beautiful do you know so it's i don't understand what's <laughs> and to be honest sometimes i'll make an effort to to read into it but sometimes i'm like well do you know what maybe it's good not knowing you know <laughs> yeah yeah and i think it's quite interesting when you listen to the song and you understand the meaning behind it despite not understanding the lyrics i think that's the beautiful thing in the, in, a, in a song is that um if the feeling of uh, that's conveyed in the lyrics is actually also passed on through the music on its own, I think that's a very powerful thing. Um, and yeah, and I, I've had some people from other countries, surprisingly like Ukraine and Czech Republic and Poland, so very Central or Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. coming to me and saying, I really love this song or that. And, I, and they tell me what they felt about it. And sometimes it matches and I'm like, yes. <laughs> job, <laughs> job done. Mission accomplished. Um, <laughs> No, but it's interesting, yeah. And the song um, Perdil Nart is very, I think it's very strong in that sense. And the fact that it was released when this pandemic was coming to uh, on, everywhere, it was it was basically breaking out everywhere. I think the fact that the the song speaks about confusion and losing my north. I don't know what is. Uh, fearing death anymore I, I don't know what's my my future blah blah I think a lot of people connected with that because of the times we are going through as well which is interesting it's not the purpose I wrote it for but it, it somehow fitted into the puzzle and um, yeah it's just interesting did you find yourself more when you left Dublin did, did everything settle back in yourself yeah to be honest yes um, because I, I really needed to stop for a while. I was working a lot when in Dublin and I was doing a master's at the same time. I was taking on, I was playing with some artists over there as well. So that, that artist from Hungary, uh, Fano, 
um, but also a, a local band called The Sewing Season. Mm -hmm. It's um, yeah, it's it's. I think they stopped since then, but um, so I was doing a, I was doing a lot, and I I felt like I needed to go back to music. That's home for me, um, and I needed to go back home geographically because <laughs> somehow I, I feel. I don't, it, it's your safe harbor, really. Home is your safe harbor. Uh, and for me, it's where I wrote most of my songs. I think that might have some connection because I feel so relaxed and calm over there. I think creativity, creativity starts flowing, especially if you lived, um, if you went through a lot of experiences that you haven't really vented out or that you have expressed um, I think that was a very important process for me to come back to stop for a while. I actually took took um, a couple months off just to produce this this record mm -hmm. uh, that I just released. So um, I, I needed that to kind of feel more like myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I, I I still have my moments where I have no idea what I'm supposed to do next. Especially now it's a bit confusing because it's difficult to book shows and mm. I've been trying to book shows, for example, for this past couple of weeks. And people are telling me here in Portugal, like that next year is already fully booked until June. <laughs> and they're like, oh my yeah. God, what am I going to do? Uh, <laughs> I'll book you a so, show. I'll book you a few shows yeah, here. <laughs> thank you. In Ireland, in Dublin. Well, I don't, I don't want to force you back here if, if it, mm. uh, you know, if no, I think to... <laughs> great. No, I think the fact that I didn't feel right in Ireland, it has nothing to do with Ireland itself. It has to do with my uh, mindset at the time. I wasn't in a good place in my life, I think, mentally. And I think that affects the way you see a place or that you um, relive an experience or something like that. I'll tell you, the weather in, in Dublin or in Ireland doesn't help that no. at all either uh, i was looking yeah. at google maps where uh, aveiro is and it looks absolutely beautiful and the fact you mentioned you know your safe harbor it, it's it's yeah. quite the harbor city isn't there quite the, it's a town it's a city right yeah it's a town it's not it's too town. big yeah. um but portugal is not too big but yeah it's mm. uh it's near the sea it has um i think most activities there are related to either fishing or mm ships boats um and yeah so it's all there is a very sea oriented culture um mm -hmm. which is really nice and comforting um mm -hmm. that's actually one of the things i lo i loved about living in dublin actually because in a way it it has that proximity to the to the sea and so there are some connections to my home in mm -hmm. that sense um, but yeah, Aveiro is, is quite beautiful. Everyone, if you're listening, you should visit for sure. <laughs> I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm curious to know if I, I have to ask my wife if we visited because we drove from Porto to, sorry, no, we from Lisbon to Porto and back. Ah. And Aveiro could have been on the way. We could have stopped there. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, we yeah. did a few stops. I think I would have remembered. Yeah, um, it has a lot of canals. Um, it, it sounds amazing. I mean, even just yeah. seeing the layout of the from the Google Maps, it mm -hmm. looked very kind of cozy. And uh, yeah, it's very cozy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I think it was because there was a little bit of land jutting out, and there, you had a, a very deep bay. Yeah, so, yeah. And then you have like a little peninsula, isn't it? Is that correct? Like a, a little sort of one uh, jutting out. Yeah, um, kind of. So the city is mm. built in a lagoon. So oh, that's it's, it. It's a lagoon. Yeah. 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 Mm. So it's yeah. basically the sea carves land out uh, somehow. I don't know how to explain it. It's amazing. <laughs> so, I, I, I just I needed to get into that and ask a little bit about the your the, the town itself, because during my research, I was like, oh, that looks. And I think it's because obviously I haven't traveled in like almost a year. So I'm always really <laughs> yeah. like just want to take just take my mind away and just go somewhere else for a couple of minutes. Oh, um, yeah, for it's, sure. It's it makes such a difference. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The other day I went to to Prague because I had that show there uh, in, a, in a little festival and it was such a like a relief. Oh, my God, I'm going into an airplane again. <laughs> it was so nice. How was yeah. it over there? How, how is it in Prague and and like with regard to the restrictions and things like that? Yeah, surprisingly, people there were quite relaxed, quite chilled. Mm -hmm. I was a bit 
uh, concerned in a sense because in Portugal everyone has to wear masks almost everywhere and um, there is distance, distancing rules that are very strict. Um, there, of course, in the event, they also had to restrict the number of people that could be there. Um, they had to add chairs to the to the venue so that uh, people could respect the distancing. Mm -hmm. But you would see large groups all together around tables uh, without wearing any masks. Um, so yeah, it was quite relaxed. But I heard from from the guys from this festival that. Um, they're actually going to to go on lockdown very soon. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a bit concerning. Mm -hmm. They yeah. they went quite strong, I think, initially in 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 Czech Republic, and then I think it was okay, and then they opened back up, and I think maybe mm -hmm. you are seeing it sort of open back up, and I think now they're going back again. Um. So speaking of like music, so emerging festival that I saw in your profile as well. What what's this about? Is it something that you're already booked for, or is this something that you're trying to get booked for? Yeah, it's something that I'm trying to get booked for because um, booking opportunities right now are so scarce that there are a couple of contests that are trying to pull a new artist up and uh, get them to perform perform in those in those festivals. So that's one of them, uh, Festival Emergent. Mm -hmm. So it's for emerging or upcoming artists. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, it's almost like a contest where people have to vote for who they want to see on stage on that festival mm -hmm. i'm actually not even sure if it's meant to be this year or next year probably next year um but yeah that's what's going on uh and they just so, opened the vote today yeah so that they only opened the vote so um how can people do so what they go onto the website festival emer Gente. yeah so if you, if you would like to vote you just have to go on to that link uh, i can write it here don't worry i got i'm, I'm way Are ahead you of got it. it okay yeah okay. so guys <laughs> by the way uh, i'm here with the wonderful sophia also known as mema and uh we're having a lovely conversation here and i hope you guys are enjoying i'm going to post the link to the festival Emer emergente emergent <laughs> emergent <laughs> yes okay. <laughs> Anna, my my wife came in. She's telling me Anna's telling me how to pronounce it. So, okay, emergency. Okay, uh, so click on that. It's it's not going to take you out of the live stream. You're going to open up a new window. If you don't want to do it now, you can leave it open until the end of the stream. And all you need to do, guys, is um, place put your email address in there. Select the band. Obviously, Mema M E M A full stop and uh submit button and confirm email and uh let's get sophia a gig next year or this year or whenever they do it yeah let's, i don't know either <laughs> let's be a part of it and that's uh her facebook page as well so um yeah really nice having a chat with you there's never enough time to sort of delve really into some uh a, a lot of things you know there's a lot of topics we could cover and um yeah uh, I find your music fascinating. I think it's I think it's absolutely beautiful. And um, as I would love to know, like what your your influences, like your musical influences, um, are, and if any, even do you know what I mean? There doesn't have to be any particular, but relate related to your music that you are creating. Yeah, um, I have a lot of influences, but so Portuguese influences. There is a big one in a band called Madre Deus. Um, they, they used to be huge in Portugal and, and they have really beautiful music. I really recommend you to listen to it as well. Um, and then internationally, I, I think Bjork is a huge influence because she experiments a lot. Um, there's also Lika Lee. Um, she's very melancholic, so I really love that. I've been influenced by many different things, even even hard rock or symphonic metal bands, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Because um, I used to listen to symphonic metal a lot and, and these kind of more melodic metal bands and uh, Lacuna Coil, for example, is a band that has influenced me throughout my life. Also, especially the melodies, I think they there's a very specific type of melodies that you find in in this sort of genre. Um, I, I don't know. There are so many. It, it's really hard sometimes to, to name them um bonobo is a big one as well and, and he actually takes that concept of 
traveling across the world with sounds, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say those are, and probably for ah, FKA Twigs, of course, because she has that more pop twist and it's also somehow experimental, but the voice is always really sweet and crystalline. Yeah, I really, yeah, there were a couple. Yeah, I think I think those were the essentials. Interesting. Oh no, that's plenty. I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, I yeah. know it's hard to be put on the spot and uh, name a lot of artists. To be honest, I haven't heard. I probably would have heard a few of those artists. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, if you could. I think Lindsay knows a few. Lindsay knows Lacuna Coil. Coil. Um, yeah. <laughs> great. Yeah, if you guys um, could send me a few of these tracks, I'd love to open my mind a little bit um, musically as well. Um, do you have any, so I know we're talking about gigs and, and before I let you go, I'd love to know if there's anything that's sort of any kind of projects that are kind of coming up or is there anything you'd like to say to people that are, that's, that's kind of happening in your world at the moment? Uh, yeah, I actually have two not yet announced gigs, but I'm going to tell them anyway. Awesome. <laughs> so in, uh, in get November, an exclusive here, guys, once again. Yes, <laughs> yes. I can't say which event yet, but <laughs> but at least I can say I can tell you the cities um, and kind of when it's going to be. So in November, I'm going to have a gig in Madeira. Uh, it's a Portuguese island, so it's quite interesting. Um, and then in December as well, I'm going to play in Porto, which is really exciting. Second biggest city in Portugal. And I'm re I really love Porto, so I'm, I'm really it's excited. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 It's mm. really good. Um, up until then, now I'll, I'll just be promoting my, my new EP that just came out. So I'm going to be hopefully doing some interviews and, and some more promotional work on that. Mm -hmm. um, there is also, oh yeah, I'm starting to write new songs as well. Um, I'm planning big shows and a new album next year. So let's see how that goes. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Best of luck with all of your upcoming projects and your yeah continual promotion now of your uh, recent uh, release, uh, Cidade de Sal, yeah, Salt City. Yeah. Sorry about my pronunciation. My wife is going uh, to gonna criticize me. <laughs> you have, uh, you no. have different accents, me and your wife. Cause, uh, oh, very much so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brazilian Portuguese, very different than, yeah. You sounded the, very Brazilian to me right now. Sorry? You sounded very Brazilian to me when you said well, de Sal. Yeah. No, Cidade. Cidade de Sal. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm learning. I am learning. It's, yeah. it's rubbing off on me. Really um, I should have learned you. Irish now. <laughs> what? Irish? Yeah, I should oh, have. Stop. Jeez, well, I studied it for six years and I forgot most of it. And I think most of my peers <gasps> and friends would have forgotten it, This, which is unfortunate, actually. It's yeah. just, you just don't get a chance to really use it, you know? Yeah, but there um, are some parts of Ireland that use it, right? Yeah, Galway would be kind of, I think Galway would be the, what do you call it, the Gale talked regions okay. would, would have a, but that, even then, you know, it's it's still unfortunately disappearing. Well, at least we got the Irish road signs, you know, yeah, every road yeah. sign is still in Gaelic, so um, yeah. happy days. Well, that's great. Listen, it's it's been an absolute uh, pleasure chatting to you, Sophia, and, and, and getting to know you and getting to know a little bit about uh, you as an artist and, and a little bit about Portugal um, loads more questions I could ask but I suppose we can we can touch base again in a few months and promote <laughs> some new stuff I'm sure that'll be that'll be coming around the corner um, what was I going to say so I'm going to play a song uh, from your EP now we, we mentioned uh, Perdio Norte which is uh, my apologies once again for my pronunciations uh, but um, I think we'll play uh, Outro Lado yeah, which sure. is also known as Other Side. Can you exactly. just tell us, can you introduce the, because uh, you have a video for it as well, or a lyric video. And yeah. um, can you tell us a little bit about this song? Because it's a very interesting um, idea. I, seeing from the video as well, I'm kind of getting a gist of like, you know, Other Side. <laughs> with, it, with regard to me, obviously, other dimensional sort of uh, ideas come to, come to mind. Um, but yeah. can you give us a little bit of an expl your explanation of it? Sure. Um, so that song is actually about it's actually not that spiritual or about the other side. Um, it, it's more about when it's a bit cheesy. It's when you see, you know, when you see someone and you feel kind of a, a click with that person and you're just looking across the room and you have all these feelings and you cannot help them. So it's more about passion, really. So it, it's basically describing the scene where you're observing someone and you're 
starting to have all these feelings um, for that person, um, even without speaking. So it's more about body language. Um, and yeah, it's a bit cheesy. That's why I chose to kind of step a little bit outside my comfort zone in that video and show a bit of skin because the song is all about that, about passion, about something raw. Uh, I, I think passion is one of the most um, raw type of feelings that you can feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and I wanted the, the music video to kind of show that, but in a very, yeah, in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. um, it was a kind of a... That video, it was produced by me. That's why it's so kind of lo-fi <laughs> um, kind of production. Um, but yeah, it's a challenge I took on because I had no budget for a beautiful well, video I mean, anymore. It was, a, it was lockdown as well, right? So this was really... Yeah, yeah, it was lockdown. Exactly. That's June. what use. Just use that as an excuse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I feel as well, like, I mean, the song itself is 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 absolutely mesmerizing as well. A um, little bit different from... Uh, Perdio Norci, right? So a little bit of a different vibe with it as well. So I, I like, I'm liking the contrasts you're kind of using, um, whether they're intentional or, or. Uh, before I let you go, actually, is there, uh, is there a unified theme? Um, uh, we maybe you mentioned it briefly. I, I didn't, it, it didn't trigger in my head. Within the three songs, is there a journey? Is there anything, or are these? Is this treated as a collection of different songs? for you uh, no there is somehow uh, somewhat a journey um but it's more maybe it's more the theme of the whole ep because they were all written with this idea with this concept in mind of having um an ep that uh, about that topic of going back to to your roots mm -hmm. um that's why i called it cidad sal as well city of salt because Aveiro, my hometown is very well known for the salt production and it has salt mines and that kind of stuff and at the same time salt has kind of um somewhat a, a restoring property you know it's mm -hmm. it's kind of healing so it was a lot about that in the three songs um maybe otro lado is the one that steps a little bit outside of that concept and it's kind of a diversion but it's part mm -hmm. of the progress part of the journey of, of healing and coming back to yourself it's having these moments these experiences along the way um but definitely Udvudor, the first single I, I i released is more about how we don't really owe anything to anyone besides ourselves so that's kind of the start of the process uh of transforming yourself of, of uh, changing what is wrong lost my north or perdil north is is exactly about that identifying the issue so maybe these are were kind of released backwards because mm -hmm. perdil north is the trigger i identified that i lost my north i hit rock bottom mm -hmm. Udvdor is like okay i don't owe anyone anything besides myself so i need to do something about it mm -hmm. and then otro lado is maybe a natural consequence of becoming healthy again and becoming yourself again and, and start living really <laughs> yeah amazing no i appreciate you explaining that that's uh it's it's always interesting how how these songs can link in and sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's not right and i love when it yeah. sometimes yeah. comes together even partially intentionally or partially unintentionally isn't it it's amazing it happens to me as well when i'm doing projects and things like that so so it's mm -hmm. absolutely awesome Great, Sophia, absolute pleasure. Um, have a wonder, what, what day are we at? We're at Tuesday, so have a wonderful rest of the week and uh, <laughs> absolute pleasure chatting to you. Yeah, same, thanks so much for having me. It was uh, my pleasure to be part of your show. Good luck with the next few shows as well. And I'll make sure to watch them. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And we look forward to seeing you at the, at the festival. So guys, don't forget to, uh, to vote right now and uh, say a lovely goodbye to Sophia, also known as uh, Mema. And yes. we're going to listen to her song, Outro Lado, also known as Other Side in English. Uh, Sophia, take it easy. Take care. See you. Take it easy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Eu vi-te naquela cava Oscilar naquela cava Olhos fixados no outro lado da sala Eu vi-te naquela cave, oscilar naquela cave, olhos fixados.
guys that was our first guest Memma also known as Sophia guys what an awesome awesome chat we've had there um, and what a track what an amazing track she's got some amazing amazing tunes up on Spotify guys her most recent uh, uh, EP wow okay got confused there Cidade de Sal there we go Cidade de Sal also known as Salt City and uh, yeah, that was Outro Lado, also known as Other Side. Uh, check out some amazing other tracks, guys. I wish I could play more. Uh, I might play some at the end of the show. Um, I would love you guys to hear uh, Perdi o Norte, Norte as well, uh, or O Norte. Uh, <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll be able to pronounce them properly by the end of the show. That's my goal. This is my goal, guys. And uh, I sent in a, a link to uh, a competition that she's part of. Guys, if you want that link again, just let me know. And uh, just open it up in your separate tab there for now. And then uh, it'd be great to give her a hand and uh, get her out there and to that festival. Get her some gigs because uh, she absolutely deserves it. And um, yeah, absolutely fantastic uh, musician, have to say. Really good chat. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed. That's great. Just, ch just looking into the chat here now. Um, Perdio North, yeah, that's probably one of my favorites as well, I have to say, Lindsay. So, yeah, thanks, Lindsay, for introducing us, by the way. Um, it's, it's an absolute delight uh, having this international segment on Tuesdays. Uh, really mind expanding, I have to say, mind expanding, um, learning about, uh, you know, uh, different cultures and, and just different music, everything like that. So, it's really good to be able to expand our minds. And breach out a little bit from the local music scene, of course, as well. Uh, but the great thing as well is, is that uh, Sophia was, as well, living in Dublin for two to three years. So she got a little bit of a taste of the Dublin music scene, uh, which is awesome. So great, great stuff, guys. We're all we're all connected here, which is absolutely brilliant. So, uh, yeah, glad you are enjoying it, guys. Hit that like button. 
And uh, if you are watching us for the very first time, you're more, very welcome here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, do hit that subscribe button and, uh, and the bell if you're feeling extra funky today. Hit the L trifecta, the like, the subscribe, and the bell. And get notified whenever I go live. I'm going live generally about three times a week. Um, we've got uh, our international segments are on Tuesdays. We like to put in some extra little pieces in here as well. We've got Consider This with Claire Nolan. And on Thursdays, we've got our pick uh, of the week with Maximilian Foy and pick for the weekend with Rebecca Cappuccini as well, guys. So we mix in a couple of different things on each different day. And uh, James Clark, thank you for the sub. Much appreciated, brother. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of it, guys. Uh, we've got our... Second guest coming up very shortly, Dave Duggan, at about 7.15. But before, actually, we're already at quarter past almost, so we're going to be a little bit delayed. We're going to have Dave at about half seven, I think. Uh, so I hope that's okay, Dave. Um, but for now, uh, Dave's shitting himself. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, God, I love it, guys. I absolutely love it. So... Yeah, let's do our segment. Consider this with Claire Nolan. I'm keeping myself busy, keeping myself sane. How are you? Brilliant. Yeah, not too bad. I've, I've jolted it up a little bit um, from the beginning of the show to now, so I'm feeling feeling extra, extra good, yeah. extra upbeat at the moment. It's 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 kind of I'm a slow burner kind of. You know, I kind of start off a little bit kind of gradual and then sort of bam burst out. Uh, usually at about the middle, I kind of peak. So this is the best time to have me, I think. Uh, I'm yeah. not saying, is 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 exactly at this moment in time. Uh, but yeah, I'm absolutely delighted to have you on this segment uh, once again. Consider this. Um, we're we're changing it up a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to do with this with the segment today. Tell 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 mm -hmm. the viewers. Yeah. Okay. Well, first, I just want to say, like, I am loving the international segment that was amazing. Like you said, informative, mind expanding. Mima, Mema, Mima, Mema, Mema, Mema. Also, Mema. Sophia Mema. would be her name. Yeah, Mema's her artist name. Yeah. Such a fascinating person. So inspiring. Mm. I really enjoyed that. Just getting better every time I see it goes back. Oh, <laughs> delighted to hear that. Jeez, and and <laughs> honestly, like, there's only so much you can cover with uh with with an artist with so much depth and and there's so much to talk about so there's never sometimes i'm kind of like oh wait sh i should have asked her this this would have been yeah. you know you're kind of thinking of what's the best things you can sort of pick out but then you get lost in something your guest says as well and you're like oh i'm more inter i'm interested in this now so it's it's always difficult to pack it all into an hour but i'm um, really happy you're enjoying it appreciate yeah. that yeah in keeping with what you've just said, which is kind of why I've moved off of the conspiracy thing for the week, is that it's very difficult to cover week to week everything that needs to be covered. When you realise that everything is, in fact, a conspiracy, it's very hard to do that week to week and get it done to the quality it deserves. So we kind of said we trialled it, that we might do it once a month with one topic that everybody votes for on the Demartians um, community on Facebook. And... I really, en I, I really enjoy conspiracy theories. I just like to know enough about them before I delve down the rabbit hole. Plus, with everything that's been going on the last two weeks, I just think that I wasn't able to be down the rabbit hole, to be honest. And I think a lot of uh, people would agree with that. So mm -hmm. I kind of just wanted to address something while I have a platform of um, musicians and music lovers and, and bring a few things to the forefront that... I don't know that I thought I that I had missed out on and that I didn't realize were going on behind the scenes. So, um, like, firstly, I just wanted to say that if you weren't aware, there is a service that is free 24 seven support services for musicians and artists and people in the event sector. This is mindingcreativeminds.com. They offer counseling services, financial support or financial and legal advice 
and how to proceed. And I just think that that is a wonderful thing for musicians and people in the events industry that might be under pressure and might not understand what to do next. I know myself that I'm in that position. So I just wanted that to be out there, especially as I said, having a platform where we know musicians are on it. I think it's a really lovely thing. Um, also, I just, and I hope everybody's doing okay, because I know it's been a rough few weeks. Like, uh, but I think, I think that this community that we've created together, it can be a support system. I thoroughly enjoy the team that we work with and I th thoroughly enjoy the work that we do. Um, and I think it's important to keep the conversation going and to have fun with our conspiracy talks, but to also take the time to kind of put things out there that, again, as I said, we might have missed. So another thing that kind of came to the forefront was hashtag we make events. And this is an international movement to highlight that the live music event sector urgently needs support from local governments to survive the COVID-19 crisis. And on September 30th, they had a global action day and 25 countries were involved and over a thousand venues took part in their Light It Red campaign, which saw them light up their venues in bright red to signify that this industry is on red alert. Now, there was a protest in Belfast and we didn't have one here, which I just think is, I had to Google that and make sure that I hadn't missed it because obviously you being in the events industry, me being in the events industry, if I thought that there was a safe way to protest, I'd be out there. And the protests that they're doing across the world, like across the world, are really beautiful and really safely done. They're not riots. They're not people on top of each other. The purpose is to show the government that we are the people who are the most qualified and most capable of running the safe events for everybody. And to take us out of the equation in finding a solution, you are hindering us when we, again, are the most qualified people to do that. Mm. Um there's some uh, I, I recommend looking it up we make events.com and seeing the work that they're doing for yourself and having a look at the pictures of the protests and the way that they're running because as i said it is it's being done safely the point is to prove that we are the people that should be in charge of the next stage um when i googled our protests to see if i had missed anything um, the first article i came across was from 1983 where musicians took to the streets to protest for an Irish music quota of 40% output from Irish radio stations. That didn't happen. Wow. Um, now, in 83, the quote was that the Irish music industry would face extinction if this didn't happen. So part of that protest were, people, were members of U2 and members of the Dubliners. Um, and yeah, so that didn't happen. And fast forward to 2016, and there's a sit in in Leinster House, a bunch of musicians protesting for 40% radio output of Irish radio or Irish music output for radio stations. And the people who were in those protests are the same people who protested in 1983. And I just think that if we are so adamant that our industry deserves a chance, then we should be trying to lead the way instead of letting it just go now today obviously there was the 15 million in funding that was announced for the live and or for the commercial entertainment sector and that's the first time we know of that the commercial sector has been like recognized in the budget at all and another 50 million in funding was allocated to the arts council and that's great but that money we need to follow that money and see where it goes and make sure that it goes into protecting and preserving our industry as we go forward because as it stands it is in ruin and I do think that we have a chance to do something great and to rebuild it but that we need to unite and reach out to one another so I wanted to take the time to use this platform and kind of bring this information to people's ears eyes whatever way you're consuming your information these days and let them know that like I am so interested in this conversation I don't think that I have all the answers I am absolutely open to people to reach out and tell me why and if and how like I genuinely want to get involved because our industry deserves better than this and we can't we can't continue going and booking gigs in the hope that we can run them and then having to announce that we have to cancel them or postpone them because not only is that hard to do like just in general as a business mm. it's incredibly hard to do as a person because you are constantly getting your own hopes up 
And like, I have to laugh actually at Dave saying he's shitting himself about coming on next. I was shitting myself because it's been so long since I've gigged and been two weeks since I've had a live stream with you that this is the closest of like that shaky, vibrating buzz of a feeling that it's still not the same, but it's just, it's nice to feel passionate about something again and to feel that buzz and that energy. So Dave, enjoy it because it's all we have right now. (laughs) Absolutely. Even even I was a little bit off, like in the not off, but like just feeling a little kind of not my usual self. Let's say when you consistently do it, you sort of fall into place, right? Uh, energetically and uh, you know physically and all that jazz. Uh, but yeah. today, after like a couple of days break, was just like, oh wait, what do I do here again? Uh, where's the natural flow of things? But that's why I'm loving doing the live streaming, right? Because anything can happen yeah. and anything can be said, and there is that sense of being alive you know it's not like a pre-record or whatever you know and and this has been keeping me going because i'm yeah. hugely into you know being on stage and performing as you guys know whether it's with a microphone and chatting and introducing some acts getting a little bit nervous you know enjoying the nerves you know or playing the drums and getting lost in music yeah and, uh you know lost in music. <laughs> tune and a half have to say yeah chic and uh Look, I have to, like, I mean, it's interesting. Now I'm hearing, I didn't actually check, I didn't see the budget. I didn't look into it. I was kind of like just keeping myself to myself today and yeah. doing a bit of work, keeping my head down. Uh, it's interesting to see, and I, and I like the way you're saying, let's see where that money goes. I think that's very important to, to follow up and not sort of rest and go uh, on this sort of information and go, oh, finally, yeah, you know, there's yeah. some funding. Let's actually see what is being used what it is being used for just just to put in context like i understand it's not just for musicians who've lost work this is across the board for people who have lost work but 3.4 billion of a recovery fund to help stimulate increased employment with an emphasis on infrastructure development reskilling and retraining so that's 3.4 billion to retrain reskill and move out of an industry that we've all fought to be a part of and to move into an industry at an entry level, which may be at minimum wage, which is under livable wage, which is less than we're making as musicians or a fraction more than we'd make as musicians. And I just think that, I think we deserve better, we deserve more. And there's enough talent out there and enough people out there who work really hard that deserve to have their voices heard. And I think it's time for people to kind of, I don't mean to be to fight and be aggressive, but to open up a conversation and be assertive because, mm we shouldn't be ashamed of having to ask for help. Like musicians are the first port of contact when anything happens across the world, any catastrophic event, any financial crisis, anything. We are the charity events. Like musicians are the first people to throw their hat in the ring and say, I will do this for you. That's no problem. I will help your cause. And we don't have anybody to run a concert for us. You know, we don't like nobody's going to, sing songs and tell like bring awareness to our industry and if we do it we run the risk of being vain or begging or just up our own holes and there has to be a balance in between that two that we can find to progress forward because without it we won't have an industry absolutely absolutely consider that (laughs) consider this ladies and gentlemen yeah it's uh i'm glad you brought this up you know this is something that i haven't been putting into my talks or or, uh, on the show at all i think that this is the perfect platform to discuss these things especially with our community uh growing and being so involved like everybody that we're working with or is involved is in is involved with music in one way or another right so it only makes sense for us to like you're saying like logically just look at the situation and see what is the most sort of you know see what is actually happening and and to stand up for me obviously you know i i had events booked as well and things like that and i just i've obviously i just i just said look leave it <laughs> i yeah. can't do anything you know as in like i felt sort of like there's people there are people trying to make something work which is great you know um I think Dave mentioned was it Danny McCarty, one of the guys who brought the issue to the Leinster House. There's a there's a group as well online called the 
M-E-A-I, I think, is it? Am I mistaken about their name? I can't remember. It's like Music and Entertainers mm-hmm. Ireland Association. If that, if I'm not mistaken, maybe someone can correct me. And they've they've done some amazing uh, work as well in, in sort of uh, addressing, uh, obviously, the issue and importance of, of music and entertainers in Ireland. And I, I don't know how yeah. much they swayed TDs or how they swayed. swayed. He's part, Dave says he's part of that. Yeah, so... Um, I've been in that group, which is an interesting one to check out, actually, an interesting group to join as well. Um, yeah. I'm just very curious. You know, for me, I'm a little bit on the pessimistic side. Unfortunately, at this stage, I've seen how sort of if, if somebody can treat and mistreat a sector. um, And obviously, as well, if we're going back to the whole everything's a conspiracy thing, <laughs> um, you know, do I really see... I don't know. I'm a little bit of a hopeless almost, you know. No, but you know, I think that... <laughs> that's, that's just me, because, though. I'm not saying no, that everyone I else think should that be. We're pessimistic and we're hopeful all at once because this is kind of like, it does feel like a pinnacle moment where it can go one way or the other. So there's this massive hopefulness in wanting to rebuild and make something that does look after the artist, the venue, the promoter, and, you know, the ideal world, the utopia as it were and then there's the pessimistic side of you where it's going from experience where nothing ever changes and it all stays the same and you're still playing gigs for free and so we've nothing we've nothing to kind of there's nothing redeeming about it but we have to be the redeeming quality we have to be part like I said part of the change it's a, it should be a musician not a minister leading that change it should be somebody who's in our Absolutely. industry who understands what it really feels like to struggle, to really need to do this as a, as a point of survival. Because musicians didn't get into this to make money, especially not in Ireland. You did it because it was so good for your soul and it was a part of who you were. And now you don't even have the outlet, let alone an income. And that's a really dangerous thing to leave alone and to not address, especially now. Like there are vulnerable people in different areas of society with different issues and different different diseases and different things and as much as I think we all need to be safe and I think that we all need to be aware that there are people that don't have that don't feel they have a voice right now because they feel guilty saying how they actually feel and Mm -hmm. those people shouldn't be silenced they should be encouraged to speak it's not about taking your mask off and saying I'm anti-lockdown I'm anti-mask it's some people are really sad and locked away in a room right now. And some people could be 15 and 16 going, I really need to see my friends, but I can't because I could kill granny. And that's the way they understand and translate it. And it sounds so harsh to say out loud, but that's happening too. Mm -hmm. And Mm. especially with creative people in these situations, I find that having that outlet removed from musicians I see it with my friends I see it with people I've worked with now I see it with people in the industry that I socialize with that it's not good Mm. for the head it's not good for the heart it's not good for the soul and like I said now we've created a conversation now we should be reaching out now we should be even just to have a support system between musicians to be like hey I'm here I get it you know like even if it's that small that that's the change you make been great Absolutely. but we need to just start doing something i don't know why when when and why we got so complacent and so content to be so undervalued mm. yeah yeah wow well but... there you go our our musical activist claire nolan <laughs> in the house <laughs> we'll be fight... talking about aliens now next week fighting the good fight <laughs> Uh, no I, no it's awesome it's it's great i appreciate you bringing that up and of course as well um that goes without saying that you know all of us here at the mars you know yourself myself maximilian foy uh rebecca and all of you guys as well like you know we are we are a, a really good support system we are a great team here so if, as well if anybody wants to confide in us in, in any way yeah. or needs some guidance you know to to the right place and claire mentioned the minding creative minds.ie i posted the link into the chat there and um there is there is pl- there are platforms and, and communities set up for people you know if you need to speak to somebody or, or anything like that and of course with myself you know if anybody w- is, wants to get into you guys know me how i love to 
do the L project. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm only one man uh, with a wonderful team, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's only so many things we can try and do. But of course, I'm always, you know, my ears always open for ideas or, or assisting in any way, you know, with regard to. Creating, I have to say for me, things. like I said, like that's been my outlet. Like I've been fortunate that like we've through networking over lockdown, we've connected and like mm -hmm. you've given me a platform and a place where I can say these things. And I do get an outlet in another way. So I've been very fortunate, which is, again, why I just felt it was necessary to kind of use that to say to people, OK, you're not alone. And there is mm. there are places for you to go. Mm. Amazing. Love it. So so what? Aliens next week, was it you were saying? <laughs> yeah, I reckon we, we have to like we have to do this in bits. So we go serious and then I'll make you laugh and then we'll go serious. <laughs> and then I'll make you laugh. It's great. It, it would be nice to kind of give it a bit of like um even have something in the website or something even in our demartian community group on facebook we haven't used that in a while really so it'd be nice mm. to set up something through that as well i think it was nice to get the interactions as well of people voting what conspiracy to pick but in this regard we could do something else because i think people really are enjoying sort of the interaction part as well which is something i'm kind of missing already because yeah like that group was mainly like interacting with the polls there so i think we should, that's something we should probably talk about this week and maybe kick start that interaction with everybody and it was a bit of crack wasn't it so um absolutely claire nolan everybody for consider this uh do you want to close off with anything else claire is there anything you, that we might have missed or is anything else you wanted to mention uh before i let you go i think i've been preachy enough just thanks very much and i'll see you next you week been preachy. you've been extremely informative <laughs> and uh very compassionate so fair play to you for bringing that up thanks. and uh looking forward to chatting you to you this week and of course yeah back again next week so take it easy claire all the best see you in the comments see you in the comments section bye 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 all right claire nolan everybody with our new little section consider this still quite a new section and uh it was nice to kind of take it to a different place today i have to say um i think it's nice to mix it up absolutely you know i really agree with claire on that and of course addressing things that are right in front of our faces right we're all involved in the music industry and um you know we're all trying our best we're all trying to make it work for me i've always been sort of I've been kind of like the the pessimist of like, ah, look, these feckers aren't going to make anything. They're going to say, they're going to promise these things. And then, you know, uh, it's all going to benefit the, you know, the guys on the higher top of the food chain and all that stuff. But it's, it's, it's good to know that, you know, there's people out there that, you know, have faith in the system to an extent or want to give it a chance, you know, or as in want to at least give it a chance with regard to um, standing up against it um so fair play to claire for addressing that it's something i definitely needed to hear myself and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that too and um yeah i guess our i will introduce our next segment which is of course involving none other than dave duggan from future fears Whew, this is gonna be this is gonna be great this is i feel like tony the tiger it's gonna be great uh so yeah let's um let's bring dave i'll give you a little bit of a, a a background um to dave duggan and future fears so future fears are an alt pop band from dublin by the way if nobody had uh known before they were formed in 2015 uh and it it contains david duggan uh, on bass and lead vocals and Susan Ward on keys, synth and backing vocals. Uh, they've been a two-piece for quite some time. Uh, they met Ray Trainer, or they started working with Ray Trainer in 2016. Uh, so for those of you who don't know Ray Trainer, he's worked with the likes of The Script, Aslan and One Republic. Uh, Dave's done a lot of work for the music industry outside of music. He's done uh, radio stations, online magazines. He's a graphic designer. He's done a lot of lyric videos and, and music videos for people, including his own one uh, for his upcoming single, which is out this Friday called Obvious. He's done all the artwork. Uh, the artwork for that was, I think, a photograph of his sister. Is that correct, Dave? I might be. I'm just kind of running through from memory here a little bit, which was then created graphically. Um, and Dave also is shooting the music video, which we've seen a little bit of a snippet um, 
of as well. So he's a hard working man and uh, he has a story to tell. He's been in the comments section for since the beginning of the show. <laughs> <laughs> having a laugh, trolling me, trolling everybody, abusing the community, ruffling things up, ruffling the bushes, and, uh, you know, I wasn't sure at the beginning what to make of it, I was like, who's this guy, what's he doing, you know, to my show, he's changing the dynamic, and I've realised that it would not be the same without him, and uh, we're all absolutely delighted to have him here with us. Uh, the wonderful Dave Duggan, uh, the amazing support in the Irish music industry, and uh, <laughs> resident troll gets trolled. <laughs> oh god, I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I just, I just have to say, like, I had to give Dave a nice intro because uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. And and uh, what a man, I have to say, what an amazing support to the industry, guys. And it's an absolute pleasure. Please welcome Dave Duggan. Finally, after so many months. Cue the round of applause. There he is. Only I may dance, okay? <laughs> How are you keeping, man? Oh, I got to unmute you, actually, because I... Uh, there we go. I'll just ask to unmute you. That's my bad. I mute people on the way in. Well, how are yeah, you? Can you hear me now? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I have no this... beard anymore. Look, I look weird. Yeah, I haven't... Uh, and, and no hair. I haven't seen you without your hair, actually. How long are you well, without your hair? Uh, when did you shave it? Well, I've only shaved this yesterday, but uh, I think I've been gone without any hair for about six months since lockdown. See, people think I'm losing mine as well because of the yeah. hat. Oh, I am losing... I am... <laughs> gotta get you one of these maybe yeah i look probably probably look a bit weird it might suit you i kind of feel like i want to just reach over and just give you the hat yeah i'll just you know? take your hair and just i wish i could head. just do that you know because you're right beside me technically on the thing i just messed everything up here great to see you well, get... absolute delight to have you on the show finally I feel like I, I, I feel like I've just been chatting to you via you know te just you've just you were just this robot almost or this this AI being in my chat, uh, <laughs> bot, like this bot I am, that I I'm implemented. The, I'm the bot. <laughs> yeah, the Kozak, the Kozak bot. bot. Just making sure that there's enough ruffle in the bushes uh, to keep me on my toes, which uh, I have to say I appreciate. I, I I was saying in the intro introducing you, you know, it was always something I wasn't used to, you know. And uh, I knew you. I knew you liked it because I seen you on Facebook. I see how you get into your into your <laughs> things. And and for me, obviously, just kind of getting to know you much more. Yeah. Really, only this year we kind of got to know each other a lot more, wasn't it? We were. Well, more we, we've touch. known each we've known each other for about four years, but that's kind of on and off. And you know, mm. we were in uh, bruise bands. That's where I first met you. I was doing. Um, I think it was Dubs TV, was it? Yeah, it was actually Larry Skin. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, I, I, I think he was. I think he was actually drunk doing that. Dude, uh, I was probably drunk to be honest. Um, <laughs> well, although I wasn't the one with the microphone, I was the rock star allegedly, right? Um, yeah. so that, Brew yeah. was definitely drunk. He, he was totally incoherent on the. The uh, I think he's in the chat there somewhere, <laughs> but he was totally incoherent on. Uh, I think he was asking what what's the meaning of the song and he said something about a phone or something like that <laughs> that's just brew that's not brew drunk that's 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 brew being his lovely self but we were outside well, Chine at that time i remember that that was a good few years ago that would have been jeez no man it wouldn't be 2015 would it i think so yeah i thought In future Chine, fears yeah, yeah, yeah. i thought future fears were older than than 2015 i thought you guys were around no that now. was cash's king i think I think I met you when I was still in Cash's King, which was, I'd say, 2013, kind of 2014. Um, okay. But it's all a blur to me anyway, because I've been doing, you know, media stuff and bands and stuff like that for, for so long that I can't, can't usually remember the... Uh, years that have done now there's so much like and you've done so much so many different projects as well some of which i've only learned about by just chatting to you on the phone uh some being obviously like the radio that you've done before and you've done some online yeah. magazine kind of style stuff as well which i just never yeah. knew about uh which is amazing yeah well we had the we had the sound feed which was 
that done really, really well. That kind of kicked off because we, uh, I kind of seen Abner Brown taking off and I, I was getting into doing um, videography and stuff like that. Now at that time I wasn't, I wasn't the best, but um, I was running a, a website called the digital feed as well. So that was doing really, really well. That was getting a lot of traction. And that was kind of like a, like what your website is. It was kind of music, but it was technology. It was local as well to, to Dublin and mainly to where I live, Ballyfermot, uh, in certain segments. And yeah, so I kind of seen a little a little area where kind of um, Abner Brown was doing his little shows in in his shop, shop and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm. So basically, I went in and. Well, no, I didn't. I contacted him via internet. I just said, can I do some uh, video interviews and stuff like that? So out of nowhere, I just kind of said to a fellow musician, do you want to just, you know, do an interview? I think they were gigging in mm -hmm. Abner's place. So I just said, do you want to do an interview? So I went there, shot the, uh, the video, done the interview, and then I met with another guy that I ended up working uh, alongside with the sound feed and the sound feed kind of took traction then when we kept doing more and more kind of videos with Abner Brown. Mm. Um, and then that just took off. So we amalgamated the digital feed into the sound feed. And then it kind of, I'd say around 2014, 2015, a little bit of 2016, um, mm. it, was, it was doing really, really well. And, and you um, studied in Ballier, right? In Ballyfermot. No, I studied I studied journalism and film production in St. Kevin's and Crumlin, which is obviously no longer uh, there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's moved somewhere else. But that's okay. where I kind of, you know, I went there mainly for gra graphic design with, and mm. eventually went on to, to do uh, web design and stuff like that. But um, I learned the basics of filmmaking and, you know, story uh, storytelling and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and photography. Some... Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Like you studied all of that because the amount of stuff you're doing, um, and have done is 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 crazy. So tell us a little bit about um, how long is the course? How long was the course? How many years were you studying? Actually, I'd be curious. Two about. years. Two years. Two yeah, years. it's great. No, it's and amazing. you get a you get a H and D out of it. So, okay. um, I don't know what that is. Cool. What so, is that? Higher National Diploma. Oh right, yeah, 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 one, yeah. Okay, okay. One thing under a degree. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so, brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. So then, so 2015, the beginning of Future Fears. So how did you meet Susan Ward? So you were that's you were two piece for so long. But how did you meet Susan Ward? Tell us a little bit about that. And and then uh, well, and then Susan, you meet with Ray Trainer. Yeah, Susan was the last person in in the band. Um, well, besides one, um, she kind of came in just a little bit after uh, Enrico, who was the drummer. But how it started was. Um, what's it called, uh, Cassius King. We were recording an EP with Cassius King, which is my old band. And that basically, we went through uh, the recording process, you know, we are getting ready to, um, to to put it out, basically. And then I think one or two members of the band just said, listen, you know, our day jobs are getting a bit more kind of, you know, we're, we have to kind of put more effort into our day jobs. And so they left. And then there was me and a guy called Shane, uh can't remember a second name so i'm not going to try <laughs> um that's that's how bad my memory is but um basically he me and him set it up and i kind of he lasted the first i'd say one or two months um and yeah and then keith who was our manager at the time keith mclaughlin and um, who i made our manager he was like i i think uh, when we worked in west dublin access radio on Ballier, i was like keith you want to be our manager and he's like Oh yeah, go on. So um we made him our manager. He found uh Amy McDonough, the guitarist. So me and Amy basically went for about two or three months as a two piece and then Enrico came on board and then the last person was Susan. So then Okay. We we went on as a band for a year or so. Mm. Um and then obviously they left. I think it's a course. <laughs> Everybody wants to leave after. It's interesting. <laughs> Maybe you're trolling them too much, Dave. Maybe that's the issue, huh? Are you just trolling it's people now? Not, 
Probably my good looks, you know. <laughs> Definitely. Well, it's interesting because I, I, I always saw you as a two piece. I never saw you as your four piece. I don't think. Although there might be some early memories of that I might have forgotten about. Yeah, I think I think because we didn't put, have an output online and you know, as social media savvy back when we were a band as we were as a two Susan, because we, you know, at that time, mm. like when they left. Um, because um, Amy has gone to America now. She's uh, married to a big YouTuber. Um, mm. now so that's handy. Uh, like yeah, big, big, big so, in size or big in like subscriptions. Uh, well, they've. I, I think they're nearly at a million followers. So wow, what does I he, think are they, even over. We'll talk about they're, this uh, one. they're the... phone scammers. Or they they ring up phone scammers. Trilogy Media. Oh, that's um, a good idea, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. I think he got like 70 million hits on a Facebook video Jesus, or something like that. Wow, so wow, wow. Jeez, that's, that's I can't even of... get bleeding. I can't even get three on, on like a music video or something might pull up and he it's gets crazy, like 70 isn't it? Million. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a uh, lot. It's a lot of work. I mean, like, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's a lot of work, these ideas, but t- tell us how then you, you, you met Ray Trainer then. Cause that was only a year after future fears. Well, yeah. Uh, them, right? uh, well, near now at the start of future fears, I was working in West Dublin access radio with, uh, and Keith used to do a radio show in there, so I, I basically kind of just kept the place going sometimes. Uh, but it's no longer going, not because of me, obviously. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was it was a great place. Like I mean, it, it started in two thousand and three, and when I was still a, a young teenager, uh, as I am now, um, that basically, you know, that's where I learned how to do radio and kind of, you know learn about media and stuff like that and then obviously mm. we went to college but i met him he does um things called sound of vision so that's maybe something you might look into as well it's basically um for radio and for like tv is if you want to do a project like a documentary or um you know a radio documentary a radio show you, you do these things called sound of vision that basically they, they, uh the government give you, you know, a certain amount to do these projects and stuff like that. So he was basically brought in to to do those projects because he's obviously a producer and, mm. you know, puts together all these kind of stuff like that. So um, he was doing that. And at the time, I was obviously walking there. I was just, you know, a busybody just doing everything. Um, and I got just over time, I got off into him and I showed him, you know, the songs that we didn't uh, get to release with Cassius King. And he was like, oh, let me let me do something with these. Because at the time he was working with, um, uh, well, like he had kind of multiple jobs, but he was kind of doing little remix stuff for One Republic and stuff like that. So he was, he had his fingers in many pies, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And basically we kind of just, you know, got talking. He looked at the, the songs. I went over to his studio, which was around the corner, which I didn't know at the time, uh, which is still where his studio is. And basically went in, you know, he looked at the uh, at the track, start messing around, and we just got talking, kind of hit it off as, as good mates. And then that was kind of like, basically I said, uh, I'd look to walk. And, and that's where it kind of called my name. What was the first started. track called? What was your Call first Call My track? Name. Call My Name. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was, that was kind of produced in the time between I met, uh, I kind of parted ways with Shane and mm. met with Amy. So that kind of started around that time. That's 2007, um, you, 17, you released uh, an EP Lucid, right? So Call My Name would have been... Oh, no, no, that was, that, that was before. I, we, see, the thing with Call My Name is, is that uh, it never really got any traction because at the time I was still kind of learning social media tips and all that stuff, you know? I knew the other end, like web design, but social media, like it's a tricky, like, it's I a think tricky like everyone, one to get. Yeah, mm. I think like everyone, they're they're just trying to uh, find their way through it. So mm. it didn't get as much traction, and it got good airplay, but you know, it wasn't kind of pushed up to the level that I thought it would be. So we added it with with Lucid. So that that was on the Lucid EP uh, with mm. the other the other songs as well. So which were also we released. Yeah, we released it before. Yeah, we released it beforehand. Um, obviously, it didn't get any traction. So, mm. so, um, 
so yeah, that's how that's how that came about. And then just there's like now I kind of work on many projects with Ray. Like Ray kind of gets me in to do back and vocals for a good few um artists that he works with. So mm-hmm. I've kind of hit the jackpot in the sense that you know everybody sometimes tries to chase fame and has this illusion of trying to you know be a huge band and stuff like that. Where the real kind of you know joy of music comes is when you can kind of get into a studio and you know help create something that either comes from someone's brain or your own brain or you know and that for me that's the kind of you know I had the illusion before of becoming big huge you know you kind of keep chasing that dream Mm. but the dream now is is basically getting into a studio as much as I can and and create you know and I kind of miss that now like the the, the great thing about what we're doing uh, and what many bands are doing um, are kind of, you know, recording stuff uh, from their homes and sending it across mm. by, by email and stuff like that. And um, I go over to Ray every so often still uh, when I can't, given the circumstances. Mm-hmm, um, and working on a few little bits as well. well so, the, tr- uh, the tracks are all, like the tracks you've released over the few years, like they are, they're, they sound big i mean the, the the production sounds big on them they sound extremely like i was listening to obvious again today but then i went back to listen to remedy and um lay it in the lay it lay, on the line lay it on the line so yeah. like and stuff like and, and it's just like like you you're saying you know you're not looking for the the whole commercial thing but they are very like in in the most best way commercial right they're so good like is it they're so catchy yeah. and they're, they're, they're like very you can't you couldn't go any more perfect kind of in my opinion anyway especially with obvious one now recently like the way it's structured the even like the subtleties like the backing vocals and everything it's so well sort of thought out but quite commercial too right it's quite yeah like i mean you know, we're what i'm focusing on now is legacy rather than trying to you know, um, you know, trying to please certain people to become, you know, higher in the standing of, of the Irish music scene or whatever. I've, I've, I am where I am in the Irish music scene. If, if we get higher and higher in terms of coverage and of our songs, it's brilliant. But what I'm like, there's a few artists out there like Barry J Hughes who are, are developing mm. like an ecosystem. And I think a lot of mm. people ignore that and, you know, focus on trying to, to, to get the song out, get it out as quick as you can, three months turnaround kind of, I mean, we've, we've had two years <laughs> for this, you know, we, like, we could have, we could have released a lot of stuff in between the time when uh, the, the others two left and to now, but I think it would have been utter crap, you know, like, because we were, we were finding our, our sound and, and we gave ourselves time because, you know, you're going to be a musician for life, you know, not for 20 years and then you're, mm. you're gone, you know, like most, I think you, you know, you just, just focus on your songs and, and, and that's what we've been doing. We've been focusing on, on creating art rather than products. You know what I mean? Um, it's great like to with, with obvious, mm. yeah, like with obvious, like if you listen to that on a good headset or good speakers, Ray, like a lot of people, and there's a thing called loud wars where people just have the, the the master turned up so loud because the compression on radio and stuff like that sometimes just, you know, destroys certain. And even with, with online stuff as well, there's a lot of compression on uh, on the tracks when you upload them. So sometimes when you hear on, on like a headset or a CD, it sounds perfect. But when you put it on like YouTube or something like that, it kind of sounds a little what we've done is basically try to, you know, create a soundscape. And especially with this this song, like there's a lot of hidden hidden kind of gems within the song. Like Ray has put like little synths that if if you actually put a good set of earphones good pair of earphones on and actually listen to the song and listen to, you know, the bass, there's little there's little bits, you know, so there's ear candy there for you to Oh the panning to, as well. Uh, yeah, because I was listening to it with these headphones, which I have to say are quite decent uh, compared to my speakers, which which are not unfortunately the best. So I have a tendency to listen to speakers, but I was listening. It's like panning at the beginning, was it? Uh, 
It's kind of before the minute, yeah. first minute, I think. And yeah. uh, oh, it's just well, fabulous. There's, 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 fabulous. There's and a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, come on, mm. sorry. No, sorry, I was just saying, like, I know it sounds like it's not much or whatever, but it makes a huge difference, you know? It's like, you know, I know it's yeah. been tried and tested and stuff like that, but it does make but, a huge, but a lot, huge difference. I think a lot of people in, in this industry, and even me still, and, you know, you want to be relevant, like people just keep wanting relevance and, you know, they have to get something out all the time to, mm. to you know, keep keep yourself out there. And, you know, that's, that's good in, in terms of making money from music and stuff like that. But what we're trying to do, as I was trying to harp back to, is build an ecosystem of, you know, developing kind of art. And there's a lot of stuff that we haven't you know, yet that, that hasn't come out yet, you know, in terms of ways we're going to try and make money and, you know, given the times, build a little ecosystem of the people that you have already. Fans like a, have. A, a lot a, of people. A tight-knit community, essentially. And, and it's what, yeah. for example, you're using Barry J. Hughes as an example. Like he, he gets, you know, about 60 people watching his live streams. I, I remember seeing, well, you know. I, I, I do his website and I get notifications um, from his website like that like there's a lot of traffic that goes through his website because he mm. he's instead of trying to chase like i mean he's gigged all over ireland and he's gone to every radio station every pub mm. you can think of he has a documentary i think called oh god what is it do you know what it is it's, back it's to basics documentary. yeah back to basics yeah mm. um with, with ian brennan and greg clifford yeah mm. um you know they well he's gone more than them he's gone to nearly every venue in Ireland, you know, played mm. every venue. And, you know, he's 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 not up there with the likes of, you know, Bono or well, that's probably a bit too high. But you know what I mean? You're <laughs> you're you're standing you're standing in the scene, you know, people want to try and climb and climb and climb higher, but they never actually, you know, at the point where they are, they never actually nurture what they already have. Gotcha. And I'm yeah. one of I'm one of these people as well. Like I've mm. up until like last year like i'm like oh god we need to get this out we need to you know mm. have this we need to have that and then i'm like i don't need to have that i need to actually go to the people that have bought my songs mm -hmm. that have you know liked every page that have you know don't, you know followed everything that we've done and actually take them for granted rather than you know chasing this illusion of people uh you know other people trying to um get approval from, you know, other people in the industry and stuff mm. like that. And, you know, Absolutely. the best way, yeah. yeah, the best way to kind of, you know, create a, a life for yourself in music. And especially now, given the circumstances and the state of the, the Irish music scene, kind of nurture the people that are, what that have already kind of, you know, supported you. And, and those people will tell other people will tell other you know it'll, and it'll grow yeah. and grow and grow it's, it's almost like and, building a strong foundation of people that like that almost that tight inner circle um that can that, and make that inner circle as in like not necessarily inner circle like they're inside on it or in on it it's just that you're giving attention and more attention to the, those ones that are truly and genuinely interested in what you're doing right yeah. now as opposed to then that, liking you when you're already was, famous or already getting somewhere which is probably what people end up doing it's kind of like a snowball effect isn't it um yeah. i read somewhere today i was doing the website and big shout out to yourself for for helping me with mm -hmm. the damaris magazine and all that stuff much appreciated but i was i wanted to do social links so not where you can share it you know on social but where people can click and access the demars twitter and stuff like that so i had to install i was doing a little bit of my own web design not very well uh but Plugin. uh, the plugins yeah one plugin didn't work well anyway i'm not going to get into a work discussion <laughs> with you here now okay but um uh, it, it had an option there saying like show how many people are following you on twitter youtube and, and all that show the number beside it because when people see it's kind of like in a couple of thousand people will have a tendency to click on it if you're kind of already middle like that's still low compared to you know but in this realm of magazine it's kind of okay now i'm not saying that i do yeah. i don't have it consistently well across the board you can actually create a fake number you can actually write in and say that you've got ten thousand yeah. following you and make people go oh shit it's like it's like almost following the crowd but back to what you're saying creating that small that's tight-knitted ecosystem i totally get it i've you can see it in myself too right when i'm doing this show i've, I've learned i'm learning this too and i i see that that is 
so important. It's so so important, and it's great that you've you, you're you've come to that sort of realization. Every, everybody, myself, everybody's kind of focused on the numbers now. Like, mm. it's great to have like thousands of you know five thousand you know YouTube followers and all across the board, you know. But I think that that comes like what we've learned is to build art around yourself, kind of extend the you know the release thing so with, with this release we've got a documentary and we've got other little things a music video and everything else kind of going with it and we kind of wanted to tell the story because we left kind of people for two years and just gig you know all around ireland you know at every kind of dive bar that we could and you know we've mm -hmm. we've made more kind of connections outside of dublin than we have inside of dublin and one kind of thing I, I'd love to say to kind of artists that are, you know, are a bit down from, you know, not getting anywhere in Dublin, go outside of Dublin because people will buy your music, mm. like your page, support you, come to any gig if you go there again. They'll, mm. you know, and it's usually little bars the size of your bedroom, you know, and they're full to capacity. And there's people that, you know, are dying to listen to new music because. It's oversaturated in Dublin sometimes. Oh, so, hopefully, uh, hopefully we've, got the, it, we've got it too good in Dublin. Hopefully the lockdown ends and we're actually able to do that. I wonder when we're actually going to be yeah. able to go into those, uh, you know, out of Dublin, smaller bars or dive bars, if you will. And, and yeah. it, it is amazing. I've been in them myself, you know, either as, uh, you know, doing the some of the Bowie stuff and, and we go out yeah. to the to the shticks and 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 it's amazing because people are so into it. You actually get paid better. I have to say, you know, as yeah, a, I'm, talk, yeah. I'm talking covers now. I don't know about originals, um, but no, you get, you get paid. It. Not every bar, but you get paid like they pay you. Yeah, like, not very much. They pay you for like travel and stuff like that. Yeah, they cover your costs. Like it's great. Yeah. No, that that's amazing. And that's totally fair. There's a lot more respect. I've not. I've definitely noticed that, which is really yeah. nice. But um, let's go back to um, to sort of your upcoming release. So you mentioned you touched on sort of you're releasing a, a documentary to come along with that. Tell us a little bit about. Uh, elaborate a little bit about that because not every everybody's probably hearing that for the first time or, or might be hearing it for the first time yeah well the documentary uh, we, as i said we kind of left everybody for two years in terms of um you know we we went like, we've had minor online social presence but we we focused on trying to find our sound and find ourselves as well because during that time um susan sadly her dad passed away and that's in our life um you know so for those two years as well susan was kind of trying to you know she kind of lost herself in that sense mm -hmm. um i hope she doesn't mind me saying that but um and we instead of you know trying to you know continue on and you know forget about all that kind of stuff we, she kind of had to you know find herself again find or and she's doing amazingly now like not that she wasn't doing amazingly then but um you know and and some of that the documentary actually kind of touches on that and we we just want to kind of explain not explain but we want to tell the story of of how we've arrived at this point with with um obvious you know and mm. it, it goes through like her situation and the my situation last or uh, August in 2019, you know, mm. uh, when I had health issues as well. So, mm. um, so it's it's just to tell the story of of, of where we've we've come from, and as well as that, it's just I love creating videos and documentaries. Uh, it's, a, it's a good opportunity testing. for you to yeah to to. But to, it's to it's also it's also to kind of it's also to create more stuff around your you know your song and you know around you as well you know. Mm. have another artistic output rather than just getting the song getting the cd putting it to the thing going to the radio stations releasing it mm. you know releasing a music video then four weeks after it's it's on spotify and there it is at the pub drum you know? yeah. we want to extend you're adding we want to extend to yeah release. you know yeah like it might fall on its arse it might do well who knows but for us it's it's art and it's, it's yeah yeah absolutely you know it's it's a great it's, idea. It's creating, it's creating something that, like, down the line, and this is what I'm on about, kind of legacy kind of thing. 
when you're when you're dead and gone, that's that's what you have to you know people to remember. Anybody. So why not kind of have you know something that you're proud of and other people are proud of, you know, and and a lot of stuff for people to you know. Dave, you're getting you know, a bit deep here, man. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but don't be. I, where's <laughs> the, the humor? I, mean, I, was, <laughs> I was expecting laughs here. Okay, we're, here here's a, we're talking oh. about legacy and Dave's death. What the <laughs> flip? What you call an egg and a boy? I don't know. A mad joke. A mad joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh beautiful! What a what a lovely segue into into laughter into nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. But no, it's it's also I have to say, like, especially during these times, right? You're you're kinda adding more more kind of girth to a release. Um obviously, you know, it's great Jesus, that people don't are... say that very often. Girth. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that I wanted to say that you said throughout the whole well, you're, you're you were holding back. Keep... You were holding back. I know, yeah. You're just know. you're I'm trying, trying to, to this could be like a great practice for like your actual real interviews you know with, with real journalists oh, oh no just don't put yourself down you're doing a great job uh, you know? I, no i i i i'm not actually i don't i don't mean to sound like i am you putting are. myself down no i appreciate it oh, i appreciate it yeah yeah no i, I look it's i know I, I actually love it i feel it feels good you know i feel like i'm doing something at yeah. least you know it's not I've, I've seen some pretty bad journalists sorry guys you know but i've seen some really worse interviewers and stuff so it kind of this is what kind of made me i'm not trying to compare myself to anybody of course but it's kind of like oh why didn't they Someone's open up to call me. Sorry. <laughs> how unprofessional <laughs> i know how unprofessional. Susan, actually. is it no way and there's dave gone and he's back oh yeah i have to unmute you now there we go can you hear me yes i can hear you okay <laughs> um sorry about that that's fine that's fine um tell us about your okay so okay actually sorry documentary when's this when's it coming out that really we're not um, gonna be able to stay serious now are we I know. <laughs> it's just gonna <laughs> now, now it's all been, the the can of worms has been opened <laughs> and now it's just gonna go downhill from here <laughs> pandora's box has been opened oh, guys God. it's over it's over yeah. oh um, yeah, now the documentary about uh, the Friday after next Friday, Friday week, because okay. we didn't want really to mess it up with like having so much on the release day. So yeah. um, on Monday, the following Monday, this coming Monday, uh, there will be little advertisements about it and stuff like that, and you know, preview kind of thing. So great, great. Um, and t tell us about Juan Manuel Flores. He's our new guitarist. He's amazing. Um, we got him as like you do on every kind of uh, as every musician does, uh, unless you're in BIM. You go to mm. uh, I think it was Claire in BIM, was she? Huh? Was Claire, Claire in BIM? No, I don't think so. Oh, she was in Bally She was, she was in, in Bally Yeah, yeah. She was in the proper rock school. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in yeah. the yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? I can't remember. Nah, me neither. It wasn't that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait! Oh god! Oh no, Juan! <laughs> How could you forget about Juan? Do you know what? You, you even forgot to put him. You didn't even put him in your Facebook page. You forgot to update it. I know. Yeah. The, well, the, he's in the photos, but he's not in the text. A lot of people yeah. forget to do that. As a lot. To, a lot I've, I've been. I've been so so busy. Uh, mm. Just you know. It's getting, too much. It's a lot of like multiple yeah. social networks plus everything else. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Well, yeah. yeah. how how we met him. Uh, through board.ie so if you're no old way. school like wow. myself and you proper old school that's still going yeah um, are you boxing me in um, into your age group you're to in your 40s aren't you Shh, man don't be doing that <laughs> oh sorry you're only 15 you look it's too 15 late. it's anyway. done I look 15 now as well With you do you years. look so fresh like yeah. I, I'm I'm getting a bit overgrowth um i had a lo I had a lovely beard but i ended up kind of shaving a bit too much on this side so it just, uh, it just has to all go then yeah yeah no yeah. i'm jewish shave yeah. i'm jewish shave uh but anyway yeah no he's amazing so he played on the obvious uh track right? no 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 he didn't no because oh. that was um he's working on the the next track that we we have coming out. Uh, okay hopefully in the next 
four to five months in the, probably the some maybe February March time is when we're going to release. And this one is a lot more kind of serious and a lot more you know it's not brash or kind of the uh, the other ones. Well, we haven't fully recorded it yet, so we don't know. But it's it's a sad yeah. song. So, um, but yeah, he's working on that. But who worked on? Uh, the obvious one was Tony McGuinness from Aslan. He, oh, of the, course, yeah. And mm. and Gary Reddy, who's who's in Karma Police, as you know, mm. gigging around. Um, and he's an amazing artist himself. So, uh, it was great to have them. You know, especially especially Tony. Tony is good friends with uh, Ray. Has done a lot of kind of production work with 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 them mm-hmm. over the years, and and he was over with Ray. Uh, I'm name dropping now. Sorry, um, yeah. he was over with Ray, and I was I was laying down basic bass parts. You know, just trying to get the the bass end of things working. Mm. He kind of came in and he was listening. I said, "Do you want?" The, well, Ray kind of. He was talking with Ray, and Ray said, "You wouldn't mind putting stuff onto onto the song." So, what you hear on 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 the song is what he's kind of laid down. It's awesome. Are it's I have to say, well it's great. Him. Yeah, it's 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 so, it's, it's, it's just amazing. it's amazing to be like he's my base inspiration. Him and Philo and Jack Astorius are like my pinnacle base heroes. Mm. You don't really see me playing bass most of the time, but like I am a bassist. I never knew. I actually. Just, I didn't know until I was researching. Yeah. I was like, "Oh wait, should I have known that?" And yeah, yeah. So but, you, um, so yeah. So he he's mm. he's like he's one of my kind of base heroes. So it's kind of weird to to meet the person that, um, you know, has been the biggest influence on you. Mm. Mm. Uh, That's sorry, amazing. there's a squeaky thing down here. So if you hear something, going, wait, 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 wait. no, I don't, I don't, I don't hear any. Although I think Brew, I think Brew, you're watching like a little bit back in time. Uh, because I'm just getting comments <laughs> off Brew here, so um, Brew, these are in bits. I, unless we're still in bits, because I, I feel like we've recovered. Uh, we've we've <laughs> we've, we've, <laughs> we've maintained face uh, for a bit there. Yeah, but, uh, it's great to have that contact and the fact that you've yeah you're able to have. But but it's it's so weird because like I like if you I I know we probably get into deep stuff, but if you kind of visualize stuff. I know we're getting into the spiritual realm of things, but if you visual, I visualized kind of, you know, being at that point and in some way, like I totally forgot about it and, and in some way, like, and down the line, all of those mm. things came true. You know what I mean? You know, kind of working. I wanted to work in the studio. I wanted to constantly in the studio yeah. and I wanted to work with, like, you know, I heard that Ray was kind of, you know, working with Aslan and I wanted to, uh, you know, you know, get in contact with them in some way, and I ended up getting in contact with the the person that I admire most in the band, other than Christy. Mm. You know, which was the, he's not in the band anymore. Um, but um, you know, and even getting gigs with like with the Pale and and as well, Christy and and Joe from Aslan. You know, mm. kind of gigging with them. I visualized that. I said, right, I'm going to put myself there and I've just done it, and I mm. figured out a way because. Like you can do the intention in your head, but then there's the physical part of actually working out a way to get to that point. And, you know, there needs um, to be an action plan kind of time, or at least an, yeah. a, a, an I, at least a momentum or a velocity, let's say, towards that direction. You can't just out of nowhere start imagining. Yeah. Let you use Bono as an example to to reach to that magnitude out of nowhere, and certain things require your, time too. To manifest. your mind sets the intention, your body puts it into action you know what i mean or your brain puts it into action absolutely you know and that's that's the way i've always seen it like with the radio mm. station and the magazine and everything mm. else like there's no limit to what you can do the only limit is is your perception of things you know what i mean mm. um like even you saying you want to do a radio show and you know you got in contact with me you figured out how to do certain things and now you're bloody flying you know what i mean mm. you, you said you set an intention in your head you got in contact with me who, who's done this similar uh mm. and you put it into action you bought all the equipment and now you're at the point where you're doing what you're doing so there's no mm. you know and that's what everybody should do you know uh, now i fall on my arse sometimes as well with with that and i i kind of 
tend to steer my mind away from that. But constantly I keep coming back to that, you know, and I keep having to remind myself because we're, we're all human. We all do stupid things. But, There's you know, some distractions in life and, and sometimes we hit a tree, you know, health-wise as well, like yourself, you are saying last last yeah. year as well, you had a bit of a health thing and health scare. And... Well, I had a, I had a stroke. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty intense. I'm still going though. <laughs> Don't do it again. You're going to cause yourself more again. How how many did yeah. you say you had multiple or uh, strokes or how does it work? Uh, tell what us happened what, was let's delve into it for a sec. It's kind of a consequence of my younger years. Just like all the kind of health. Like I I I went crazy, mm. like Jordan, because I've been in I've been in every genre of music since like 2004. But I was kind of I went to the I went a bit mad in the kind of rock era. Like, Brew will attest to that. Like, you see me kind of. Uh, it's mad. Based. You see me. I, yeah, you see me. I can't imagine you. I can't imagine you like that. I mean. Yeah, well, you. Like, a lot of people. Like, I. Yeah. You know, I. Well, no, like, I can't hide when I'm drunk because, you know, I'm drunk and whatever. But, you know, I. Uh, nowadays, I try to, you know, be myself and not, not kind of go anywhere near alcohol and stuff like that mm. not that i'm an alcoholic around like that i just i can't stop when i go you know i well i can't stop but same as myself man I, i'm at the same yeah. kind of thing and i i like to take my breaks and you yeah know. but I, look i i done that i done that for for a long long time I used to have mm. jack that two bottles of jack Daniels. that's a bit excessive that i don't think i could do that yeah yeah that's <laughs> so that that yeah so that a lot maybe, of that maybe 10 pints of guinness lot, would would be my thing <laughs> Is that the same? Is that yeah, like so, one bottle of JD? I don't know. I don't know. But, like, I, I grew tired of that kind of, you know, way of doing things. And mm. uh, the consequence of that, like, the, the actions that you put in now will affect you later on. You mm. just don't know you. And that's what happened to me. A lot of the health uh, stuff from, you know, what what I've done in, in my kind of, early 20s and mid 20s kind of affected me now and mm. uh, how it came about was I was sitting in, on me uh, how ironic I was sitting in the in the sitting room on my chair and uh, on on a computer talking on a YouTube channel not yours now uh, in a YouTube uh, chat room and not chat room that sounds real 2000 and, 2001 sounds <laughs> sexual kind of thing <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so I just I just put my head and like most times people have the you know the whole droopy thing on the the face. But what happened to me is I had a ischemic stroke, which was in the neck. So an artery dissected in my neck when I turned I turned my head a little too quick, and you know I think it was the artery was weakened by blood pressure stuff that I I never knew I had high blood pressure and that was mm. caused by other situations uh with with my health um and basically i went in i i, I went all dizzy i won't go into that hotel, but uh i was in in the hospital and like thinking that just had some sort of you know something wrong with the back of my neck and then they told me i had a stroke so i was like okay so but i was out for a while like but in my head i thought there was nothing wrong but my whole body was you know just just crazy it was just like i couldn't my left leg was weakened that's the only kind of consequence and internally there's a few uh there's a few little bits still going on but uh most i'm kind of recovered now when, when did know, i meet you because so. i remember meeting you um Down in, a Chine lane. in Chine, wasn't it no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> no that was a different time that was a different time uh but in Chine, right I haven't seen you in years, and then I, I ran into you in Chine. Was it a gig for? Was was it you were playing was, a gig? I think, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, the I think we were doing a pyro, either pyromania or uh, your what's a crystal, crystal skull. skull. Thing. I think it was because yeah. I, I think we got a reminder on Facebook that in, involved your involved future oh, fears, God. but um, I, there was no video evidence. I think that was reminders. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, wait till yeah. next year. The fucking reminders <laughs> of 2020 <laughs> like, that's gonna be horrible um, but um no i just remember it was good to see and i remember you told me the story 
Um, but I think that was actually that yeah. was another time. Actually, no, that was Crystal Skull session. The the time that I'm thinking of now. But then I got a reminder as well separately of of Pyromania. So, but I remember touching base with you then very vividly, and then uh, and you telling me that that you 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 had your stroke back. Yeah, past, it sounds it sounds before. a lot well. Well, I so shat myself when you told me that because yeah. I was like, we're roughly the same age, you know, and I debaucherized a little yeah. bit myself. Uh, quite just a bit. one thing I can say to people, just don't like go easy with, with don't believe in the rock and roll lifestyle. Just kind of, yeah. you know. Well, I, I think I'm personally done with it. Anna, yeah. what do you think? Sorry, I didn't hear, baby. <laughs> okay. She's not listening. <laughs> she's not, did you hear her, did she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. She's, she's behind the green screen. But, uh, uh, Deadly. Listen, I I, will, I don't want to take much more of your time. Um, we're chatting for about fifty minutes here. It's mad. There's actually yeah. so much more we didn't even delve into the sort of metaphys <laughs> metaphysics and 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 other stuff. So I suppose we'll have to do this again, Dave. What you think? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll come on a bit more now. Thank God. Broken you, the cherry. You 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 pop the cherry now, so you happy days. <laughs> See, it's not as bad as you think. And not that not that I uh, I am assuming. Are, are I'm assuming. you going to give me one of these? 60 minute round yeah do you want to do the lightning round do you yeah yeah, yeah. all right let's do it but uh okay so let, before we finish before we move on to fight i'm gonna play uh obvious obviously um and you have a like a oh it's just like a video with the with the logo right so we, we have yeah. that. it's not the music video when's the music video coming out again sorry if you mentioned already uh, well that's a little delayed because the last part of it uh were to be filmed um so we don't know with the, the lockdown so okay the, the actors so uh but that that'll, that'll come out so great we're not great. too too certain about Did that. You... but we have the documentary the, the friday after the release and brilliant we've we've uh, a lyric video coming out on the same day as the release so lots Amazing. of stuff done and lots of pictures of me naked brilliant <laughs> I, that, I i i i was hoping i was hoping that was going to be the case um <laughs> oh, okay i knew I sorry should've... i'm ruining your show i knew I it was long ruined Dave, it was long ruined uh, <laughs> since you joined my since when you joined my the comment section. It was I'll, already, I'll start now, will I? It no. was already going down. No, but um, no, it's 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 great. No, okay, I'm just trying to find these lightning question things. Oh yeah, okay. So before as well, I was gonna ask, um, can people like get in touch with you for like tell us a little bit about outside the the music as well um because you have oh yeah other endeavors if, if that you're any, interested in so 369 is uh the kind of main thing we were doing live streams for a while on facebook the dreaded facebook that mutes everything oh it's horrible and, yeah uh, that the facebook stuff yeah. is just psh, absolutely ridiculous yeah yeah so we were kind of doing that and trying to keep you know people well musicians kind of going through the the lockdown and then Obviously, I went on to other projects. So if you want a music video or you want to kind of, you know, just kind of get together and do some creative stuff, uh, just go to 369.ie uh, on Facebook. Uh, I'm developing the site, so that's not available yet. But, um, yeah. You got and the domain. Kind of, yeah. I actually, yeah. Um, and you, you can see a lot. Of the, go on to our YouTube, 369 on youtube no 369 productions on youtube and you'll see the videos that we've done um you'll see brew's music video yeah the dreaded brew <laughs> the dreaded so tell us a little bit about that as well like what was that like working with brew and uh, especially after Awful. kind of the lockdown of not uh <laughs> <laughs> of not seeing people think brew's the loveliest guy in the world but he actually has a huge ego <laughs> oh I, like, I know that i know that oh my god like he was like where's my cans where's my beer and i was like listen we have a budget of like four euro was, like, was brew <laughs> drinking on the job was he no 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 they were all empty cans it's the oh, funny thing oh is, yeah he, he had, did mention had, that yeah 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 but we got uh the guard coming over to us when we were on the canal and the guard was like giving us the can or taking the can and uh we realized that we were actually doing a filming thing so that was funny i was i didn't catch it all on, that, yeah 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 so uh so we weren't drinking on the canal by the way when we were doing you weren't you didn't make a sesh out of it no unfortunately who else did what else did you do you did barry did you do barry uh you did kevin casey's lyric video yeah kevin casey's lyric video um there's loads of other stuff that we've done 
I can't remember offhand. I just I keep try and keep myself busy, just doing yeah. all this stuff, you know. Especially through lockdown, like you know, there's only so much you can be looking at TV and all that stuff, you know. What's um? I forgot what to um. What's like? I know you were kind of talking about, you know, you're building the community and, and the ecosystem and stuff like that. And, and I'm just sorting out these lightning round questions. So uh, I, have, I can't find, I'm going to, I'm going to make some particular. You don't specific. have to do it. No, we... let's do it for the crowd. We have to do it. We have to do it. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to come up with these particular tailored questions to you. Um, what so, knickers are you wearing? 60 stands. <laughs> definitely not going to put you on the spot. Knickers, uh, I mean jocks. <laughs> uh, I might put you on the spot. We'll see. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. But um, like, what are kind of like the the top three things musicians should probably be looking at right now with regard to like the lockdown and sort of where where it's we seem to be going and what's kind of like with regard to releasing music and stuff like that? Is there any kind of advice we could pin it down to three things? Like, I suppose maybe um, just to, just to isolate it. Yeah, just just work on like if you're releasing, like if you're only starting to release or you're kind of unsure how to release. Uh, stuff I would start with obviously getting all your stuff together getting your songs together uh, if you're releasing it online release it about a month or not release it put it up on DistroKid about a month beforehand so it gets into all the distribution shops mm -hmm. then have a strategy of all your social media um, you know all your graphics and, and what you're going to do and stuff like that and just basically do them a month before so you can just throw them out every day then and you're not kind of you know going crazy trying to you know put stuff up or whatever and you just have loads of content ready and just get as network like mad just go to anybody and just ask where they're uh where they can kind of you know get onto their playlists or where, where mm -hmm. you know emails to send their epk have a good epk together um and if anybody wants to know how I do it, they can contact me. Um, in your email, just have the, the, the name, uh, the release date, and if it's a single or not, and then have like your social links. Then your, uh, well, above that, you'll have your first release, your uh, place to download the MP3, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just have everything together and make sure, make sure everything works. And then just take it from there, you know, just, mm. I just, if, if, nothing happens immediately don't be worried just keep going with it and just keep working at it you know every, every like there's more singles you can release as well you know mm. so every time you think one thing doesn't go as well you can improve on the next thing and the next thing it's a it's a development thing so yeah yeah uh, of course cool. good to know that you're yeah. you know for people to know that you're there to help and in any way you're a man of many talents so uh it's, it's great that you're so helpful you know yeah um, i was gonna say something but i won't <laughs> yeah i had a feeling i could sense it. i could sense it coming uh, that even sounds yeah. innuendo e fuck's sake i just yeah. I can't i can't escape it all right oh. dave duggan in the house from future fears um thank you for our... keeping you on so long grand <laughs> this was long overdue so uh you know it's it's good i'm glad we had a nice long chat um let's do our Take lightning round away. Let's do lightning round. Cool. You ready? Yeah. All right. Guys, Dave Duggan in the house finally. And we're going to do the lightning round. Let's do it. I just, I wish you could hear the music. This is the only issue. It's like you're not getting into it. I can it, see so. it. On, there's a screen just below. Oh, so you can see it at you, least. So. Okay. So yeah, at least you'll be able to see your seconds and stuff like that. All right. Bam. Lightning round. 60 seconds with Dave Duggan. Tell us, Dave, what is your favorite venue you have performed in? Uh... Uh, Angler's Rest. That's where I started. Oh, interesting. That's around the corner from me. Yeah. What's been your What's your favorite independent musician right now? That's not Future Fears. True. Okay, that's what's uh, what's and been yourself. what's been that's right. What's <laughs> your least favorite artist that you've worked with? That's probably gonna be me again. Uh, Kozak the Mars. <laughs> <laughs> what What's an instrument that you wish you could play really well? Saxophone. Uh, what's your favorite color? Blue. What's your favorite type of cheese? Uh, cheddar. What's the best crowd you've played uh, for? Uh, it might be the same venue, but what's the best crowd? County or country? Or... Uh, 
Dublin. What's the best video quick? format? MP4. Final CD or WAV? Final. All right. Who invented falafel? Uh, Mr. Falafel. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, that's our lightning round. We haven't actually done a lightning round in quite some time. So I'm glad we brought it back, especially for you, Dave. Uh, it's always there. We can always have a drive around in the Lamborghini as well, but I think I've lost the uh, the graphic of that one um, in, in, in a recent Streamlabs update. So... Um, yeah, this has been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad you actually made it on the show. And um, listen, best of luck with your upcoming release, with your documentary, and then as well your your music video, and then all the other ventures that you. I might, I might come doing. on for to consider this if you want me to. No, actually, it's all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate it. Um, no, of course. I mean, look, if there's something as well you want to do, like outside of what's on the show, like have your own little segment or or whatever, you know, an evening with Dave. Yeah. You know, um, I'll get my cigar and my gown. And... Get your apple juice, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, by a fire. Um, absolutely. Viagra. Look, you're <laughs> you're always welcome in any form or fashion on the show. So, um, just give me a shout when things, you know. I'll be you... Davina on Saturdays. Huh? I'll be Davina on Saturdays. Davina. Oh, Davina yeah. on Saturdays. I get it right. <laughs> so I was thinking of Davina from Sunshakers for some reason. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know her. Well, I could be her as well. <laughs> okay, let's. I think we should cut it here because I feel like it's just gonna get worse for now. Listen, man, best of luck. Let's do the. Uh, let, okay, so when you when I let you go, we're gonna play um, obvious as well. So, legend, is there anything else you want to close off with, Dave? It's been a pleasure, by the way. No, that's Thanks it. So much, man. That's it. Sweet. I hope people are still watching. We have a few people um, watching still, and. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of people watching back. I might do the short edits again. I remember I used to do that where you get a little snippet online. So it takes a little bit of work, but I might get around to doing yeah, that. Yeah, especially with me. There's probably a lot of, you know, cutting and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, a 45, 50 minute to an hour segment. Although um, it would be nice to give you something maybe before your release as well on Friday. I was thinking more so. So you have yeah. extra content to put. I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. And it was very funny because I was joking with Dave earlier on, like, because he hasn't, I've been asking him to come onto the show for so long. And uh, I was like, oh, my bitch and my internet's going to blow up or something. And there you have it. It did something weird there. I had to reset my stream labs. So, yeah, welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We're not finished yet. We're going to go, uh, we're going to play obvious and then I'm just going to close off the show. So whoever's online, thanks for coming back. Yeah, we had a little, little boo boo, technological boo boo. So yeah, Dave Duggan guys. Um, let's do let's do um obvious let me just fix this up here and uh play this track for you so yeah welcome back yeah we're back we're back we're back it's all g these things happen they don't happen often but they decided to happen today so obvious guys the link is in there the pre-save if you hadn't pre-saved it already it's out this friday I also just want to say i'm going to let you go after this tune great show today i have to say great chatting with uh sophia uh mema all the way from um portugal uh, really fascinating artist such great music i have to say guys check her out uh, M E M A full stop. Check that. Check that artist out. She's wonderful. And um, we had some really good tunes on today. Um, all female artists have to say I didn't even realize it happens now and then, but it was really great to get um, to have that. And um, 
uh, and then we had Dave Duggan from Future Fears there at the end, guys. So cheers for coming back in. Uh, Dave broke it. Yeah, ah, there's Anto. Anto, what's the story, man? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Dave, Dave must have worked some intention. One of one of his visualizations as he was talking about uh and, and to jeopardize my show but um oh well you know he's he's trolling me everywhere he's trolling me in the comments he's trolling me in in the in on screen he's trolling me off screen it's you just can't win you just can't win guys um but in all serious it was great to catch up with him uh, great to have a chat and and you know great to kind of delve into um a few topics as well uh an hour is not even enough on how much we can cover i'd say between us two how much we can chat so yeah look thanks so much for tuning in good to see you back uh brew and anto glad you are still tuned in by the way um let's let's enjoy obvious together yeah and um i'll see you all on thursday thursday we've got a great show by the way once again um we've got oh jesus i can't remember <laughs> I'll I'll post it tomorrow. You'll get informed straight away. Um, yeah, jeez, I'm turning into Dave now. Can't remember things. <laughs> See you later, guys. Love yous and leave yous. Bye bye. Oh. Have you seen? Well, she's the one that makes you feel like everything is real But I know it's his intention to fall in love with you And I can't believe it Well, if you can see him now Then she's only with you now for the money And she's playing you like a fool And yet you don't know what to do Tell me